happened to establish a solid tradition. <laughs> the people that come here will compete for a starting job uh, immediately. <laughs> The curtain goes up for Jim Levick and his South Florida Bulls. Brands World Diversified presents the inaugural football game. The South Florida Bulls entertain the Kentucky Wesleyan Panthers. Call this the ultimate coming out party. Many of these South Florida Bulls have worked out for more than a year, but with nobody to play. You know that old saying, all dressed up and no place to go? That will not be the case tonight, as the South Florida Bulls make history. Hello again, everybody. I'm Al Keck. With me, the former head coach at Rutgers, former defensive coordinator for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Doug Graber. And Doug, believe me, this is one special night. This is unbelievable, Al. We're about to witness the birth of a college football program behind us. 46,000 people here tonight, one of the largest 1AA crowds in the history of 1AA football. 21,000 season tickets sold. <laughs> this is amazing, Al. You know, you take a look at this, you have some 46,000 people inside the stadium. You've got fireworks, you've got all the bells and whistles, and Doug, oh, by the way, we also have a football game. We sure do, and I think we got a good one tonight. You see the South Florida Bulls taking the field for the very first time. You want a stadium that is rocking. In fact, many of the students were outside this stadium hours before they were allowed in the game. And believe me, the minute that they were allowed into the stadium, they had been making noise all day long. Now, put yourself in Jim Levitt's shoes. Here's a guy that has probably more talent than his opposing team, but Kentucky Wesleyan has the experience. But the first battle is the coin toss. Let's go down to the field for the very first coin toss. He will be flipping your coin. Who's the spokesman for South Florida? Number 16. The spokesman for, for Kentucky Wesleyan. Which one? Number nine. All right, Freddie will flip the coin. We have a heads and we have a tails. Call it in the air, it's gonna go to the ground. All right, if you will call it in the air. Here it goes. Heads. Heads, he calls it. It is heads. Come on, confirm. Kentucky Wesleyan has won the toss. They are going to defer to the second half. Which goal do you want to kick, receive, or defend the goal? We want to take the ball. We want the ball. South Florida will be receiving. Yes. Which goal do you wish to defend? Defend that goal. Step this way. Step this way. Kentucky Wesleyan deferring to the second half. The South Florida Bulls will get the football the first time that they take the field here against Kentucky Wesleyan with their collegiate football debut. The Bulls have never played a football game. They're taking on a Division II team that was 3-8 and eight one year ago. Welcome back to Tampa, where the Bulls make their collegiate football debut tonight. They take on a Division II team, Kentucky Wesleyan, a team that was 3-8 and eight one year ago, and a football team that is coached by a former assistant with the Green Bay Packers, that, of course, John Johnson. Let's take a look at the Dodge keys of the game, Doug. Well, first of all, for Kentucky Wesley, they have to control their emotions and focus here. This is the largest crowd they have ever played before. They have to use their speed to make some big plays in the game, and they somehow have to take advantage of their strengths, which for the University of South Florida is the, certainly the quarterbacks and the wide receivers. 
Now for Kentucky Wesley, and they also have to control their emotion. They have 48 Letterman back, but they have never played in front of a crowd like this. They've got to handle the blitz, which South Florida does so well, and somehow they have to find a way to negate the great speed that USF has. All right, Doug, you're a former college coach. Put yourself in the shoes of Jim Levitt. You have the talent, but you don't have experience. How much does experience mean in a season opener? It's a, you know what, Al? Sometimes when I had to start eight freshmen, I was scared to death. I can't imagine how Jim feels tonight. The Bulls will be starting 12 freshmen. Back to receive the first kick for the University of South Florida. That is Raphael Williams. He was the leading ground gainer in all the preseason scrimmages. And kicking off for Kentucky Wesleyan is Adam Kilgore. Now this Kentucky Wesleyan team there's your head coach for the South Florida Bulls, Jim Levitt. He is looking at a Kentucky Wesleyan team that opened last year with Western Kentucky and lost 66 to nothing. Coming down to Charles Jackson. He takes it at the two. Jackson breaks the seam. He's at the 30 and pulled down one step away from going a long, long way. A 31-yard return. The starting quarterback for the South Florida Bulls, Chad Barnhart. And Doug, if there is one place where the Bulls have experience, it is at quarterback. Yes, he's played a little bit. He's a transfer from South Carolina. And I like this young guy a lot. He's got a lot of poise, Al. The Bulls say they love to pass the football, much like the BYU offense. Quick look. He hits Charlie Jackson over on the left side, gets a block from Rivers. And on the very first play in USF football history, the Bulls get a first down. Let's go down to the sideline. A reporter there, Brian Ox. Brian. Thank you very much, guys. This crowd is electric. Big game atmosphere. This is a bowl game atmosphere. Why not? This is the biggest college football game to take place in these parts in a long time. Weather conditions are ideal. The playing facility is in great shape. The players are ready to go. Let's go back upstairs to you guys. Now, the Bulls scripted their opening 10 plays. They get a first down on the very first play. The pitch now to Williams. Williams, excellent blocking right side, makes a cut, and he takes it over midfield very close to the Kentucky Wesleyan 40-yard line. You see the quickness right off the bat, Al. You know, from up here, you can see the kickoff, and you can see it. On the first play, you can see it. It's a great advantage for the USF Bulls. Again, just excellent blocking there on that right side with the fullback leading the way. Just a simple toss, and they absolutely had him uh, beat to the corner. How about this, the first two plays for the South Florida Bulls, Williams right there with the big 15-yard gain. Two plays, two first downs from the 41. First and 10, Jackson in motion, good protection. He hits Jackson, and he had him right in the hands. And all the Bulls are hoping to get Jackson about nine touches a game because they say he has incredible speed. Yeah, he's really been their most consistent and best receiver throughout training camp, Al, and all the practices I've been to. Here's John Johnson, the head coach of Kentucky Wesleyan. Again, he coached the special teams with Mike Holmgren there at, uh, with the Green Bay Packers, so he has a lot of experience. Brings up second down and long. The Bulls with the pass for a first down on their very first play, a run for a first down on the second, incomplete pass on number three. Straight up the gut, that's Williams. He will be the main man carrying the mail for the Bulls this season. You know, they have already shown four different personnel groupings in this game, and that's a great job by the offensive coordinator, Mike Chico Canales. He's a, I think he's an outstanding young coach and a great hire for this program. Now, how often will a team like Kentucky Wesleyan see that in Division II football? Well, you know, they'll see it, but the problem they have tonight, Al, they don't, you know, they don't have any idea what they're going to see. Everything is new. Third down. Once again, Barnhart going to the air. He's got Dell. Dell at the 25, taken down near the 20-yard line. So the Bulls figured they would come out passing, and we have flags down. We have flags down near the 20-yard line. This was after the play. 
Okay, the, the Cliff Dell is a transfer from Florida State. He was an All-Stater. He had a thousand yards. He's got great soft hands, which you can see right there. Good job advancing the ball. Now let's try to sort out these penalties. Well, Jim Levitt, not a hacky, happy camper right now because his team was called with the personal foul. I the think the I, flag was thrown near Kenyatta Jones, who was a freshman left tackle from Gainesville. He's an excited freshman <laughs> left tackle. True freshman, I might add, from Gainesville. Has a lot, a lot of talent. Just a little bit too excited here to start the game. Fans, they made the first down. It'll be 15 yards and first down. So the Bulls will still get the first down. But the ball is taken back. Now, these are some of the mistakes that Jim was really worried about with such a young, young football team. Here's a look at the Tampa Tribune offensive starting lineup again leading the way. The freshman split in Charlie Jackson. He is a quick one. Barnhart at quarterback Dixon and Williams. You've already seen them. Williams with the big run there at running back. And as far as the offensive line is concerned, this is a big offensive line averaging some 285 pounds up front. Not bad for a bunch of kids here. Well, they're just a bunch of young kids, and this is really the toughest part of starting the program, the offensive line. So they mark it at the 34 first down. Williams, the ball carrier, and there ain't nobody home. You know, that was really stacked up pretty good. And I, I really think Kentucky Wesleyan has a little bit of an advantage in both the offensive and defensive lines because of all their experience, in particular against the Bulls freshman offensive line. Ramsey Rasmussen, he's one of the experienced players there on Kentucky Wesleyan. He made the tackle. Sets up second and long. Very few second and long so far in this opening drive for USF. Ramsey, a young man from Denmark. From the 35, the Bulls on their opening drive. Barnhart had Dell open. Looked like he zigged when he should have zagged. Obviously a different read. Dell had a different read than Barnhart. That was, Al, that was the smash corner routes, and they do read those against the coverage, and that was the classic example of the wide receiver and the quarterback not reading the coverage the same way. Barnhart, two of four so far with, for 26 yards. Remember, he hit his very first pass. That was an 11-yard gain for a first down. This sets up third down and nine. Three wide receivers, and the lone running back is Williams. Barnhart goes the other way. He's got his tight end wide open. He takes it down inside the five-yard line. That is Trevor Hippolyte. Trevor Hippolyte is a former wide receiver, so he can run, and he simply just ran by the linebacker in that matchup, and that wasn't much of a matchup. There's the speed again. Once There's again, you've got the wide receivers on the left side. You have the tight end sneaking out on the right, Doug. Yeah, and he had a matchup with uh, number 45, a linebacker, got by him and also got by the safety. Excellent, excellent speed. It's good for a 32-yard gain. Now, you're playing defensive back here. You've got to stop this play. And yeah, that's a great touch throw by Chad, too. Good poise by Chad starting off the game. From the four, knocking at the door for the very first time. Williams fights his way very close to the goal line. I'm impressed with the push that the young line is getting on Kentucky West, and I really am. That was a good push right there and had a chance to get it in. Now the Bulls outweigh Kentucky West Wesleyan up front. Again, the Bulls, these young offensive linemen, average about 285. That Kentucky Wesleyan defense, about 245. So you imagine trying to stop these hosses. Yeah, you know what? They're running right behind Cedric Bell and Ken Kenyatta Jones, and both those young guys are going to be great players in a couple years. At the goal line, second and goal. Williams again. Touchdown, South Florida Bulls. First one in history right there, Al. Great opening drive, great start to the football game for this new program. I thought it was an outstanding job by Chad Barnhart throughout that series. Again, he had control of his emotions, great poise throughout. Good push right up here up front. Raphael puts his head down and just knocks it in there. So on the opening drive, the Bulls score their first touchdown. And to try the point after, this is Steve Riggs. And the kick is good. So the Bulls have waited for more than a year for this opportunity. And it works big time. The Bulls score a touchdown on their opening drive. 
and they take a 7-0 lead over Kentucky Wesleyan. Nothing but smiles right now here at Houlihan Stadium where the South Florida Bulls come out smoking their opening drive ever, and look at that. They own a 7-0 lead. Raphael Williams on a one-yard run. He scores 11 plays in three minutes and 16 seconds. There's a look at head coach, Jim Lovett, talking to one of his assistants, Mike Hobby, and the man getting ready to kick off one of the few players with experience on the South Florida football team. That is the kicker, Steve Riggs. Well, he does have experience, and it'll be interesting to see now. Kentucky Wesleyan tried to angle kick away from the speed. Let's see if the USF is going to kick it straight away or try to angle it. Marquise Churchwell and Jeremy Sleep are back to receive the kick. And this is Churchwell. He takes it up to five. He's hemmed in, brought down immediately at the 20-yard line. And the tackle put there by Brian Searcy. So the opening tackle in USF Bulls history. And leading the offense on the field for Kentucky Wesleyan, there's your quarterback, J.D. Myers. He's a sophomore that played last year and still threw for 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns, but had 16 interceptions. Here's a look at the touchdown. Excellent leak block, excellent physical football, knock it in the end zone. The first time that Jim Levitt's defense is on the field, he was a defensive coach at Kansas State. Should be interesting to see what this defense does. From the 21, flag goes down. I believe Kentucky Wesleyan may have taken too much time. But the play clock has zero. What a mistake there by Kentucky Play Wesleyan. Delay the game. Five yard penalty. What's that? They tried what we call a Y flop to totally confuse uh, this young uh, USF defense, and really they just tricked themselves, which, <laughs> which so often happens. Us coaches, we get too tricky at times. That's got to be frustrating because you've had all offseason to call this very first play. <laughs> yeah, well, well, here they go again. Now they got it uh, a little bit better time sequence. Now from the 16, this is first and 15. They hand off to the fullback. That is Scott Dykes again. Nothing there. And one of your former players, Brett Avery, among those on the tackle. He's a transfer from Rutgers. Again, the Bulls go 66 yards at 11 plays. Took 316. The key play was a 32-yard pass play from Barnhart to Hippolyte that took it out there at the four. And there you go. Red Ever Avery, one of your former players. Yeah, he did a nice job, and he's a heck of a kid, and I'm happy he's doing so well down here. He went to Tampa Catholic from the area, and the Bulls are going to get a lot of those type of players that may go someplace else, but then transfer home. Once again, the defense making the tackle for the South Florida Bulls. That is Marshall Smith. Now let's take a look at the Tampa Tribune. Starting lineup for those South Florida Bulls. Once again, Avery leading the way. He is a junior. He has experience. Hatley, Hay, Smiley also up front for the tent for the uh, South Florida Bulls. Linebackers, and this is a good crew. Wilson, Smith, and Woods. And in the defensive backfield, Green Davis, Mans, and Henry. A very young group. Six freshmen are starting on defense for the South Florida Bulls. Third and very long. Meyer back to pass under pressure. He decides to take off. And he is nailed at the 25-yard line. Glenn, How about that tackle? Glenn Davis came up and really uh, put a good hit on him. And uh, this is what J.D. Myers is going to give him problems with because he really can scramble. He's got good speed. He's a former high school option quarterback. And he gets a lane that opens. You get a great view of it right there. And he's got enough speed to cause this defense some trouble. Great job by the corner keeping contained and making the quarterback pay the price. Glenn Davis and Terrence Smiley with the big hit on Myers. And back to punt is Ryan Brim. So our first punt this evening. And Charlie Jackson back to uh, field the punt. Oh, and not a good punt. That is very poor. That hits just past midfield. And the Bulls will have excellent field position for their second possession. The Bulls took it down for a score the first time they had the football. And the Bulls get it back. Excellent position. We'll have it right after this. 
9-19 left to go in the opening period. The South Florida Bulls, excellent defense on their opening defensive series. Now they get the ball for a second time. You see the score. The Bulls drove 66 yards. The first time they touched the football for that opening score, Raphael Williams from the one with the honors, and the Bulls lead it 7-0. Once again, excellent field position, Doug, at the 47. Great offensive series, great defensive series, and great special teams. That's a heck of a start for the Bulls. Now the punt by Brem was only 23 yards, and that leads the way for this field position again at the 47. Kentucky Wesleyan faking blitz. Barnhart, excellent protection. And he's going deep. He's got Dell, but he overshoots him. Well, he was really pretty well covered there, and that was an overthrow, and he certainly did that on purpose. He's not going to give a chance at had an interception here early. In the, you know, he stumbled coming out, too. He got his uh, foot caught in the left guard, and that kind of really gets a quarterback out of sync. Yeah, he stumbled coming out with, I think, he you know, take the back, he stepped on the center's left foot, and that really puts the whole play out of sync from that point on. Now, Dell was open momentarily, but it sets up second and 10, second and long for the South Florida Bulls. Again, they lead 7-0. Hand off Williams, and he is hit immediately. Excellent tackle. That is Carl Bates, who is from Largo, went to Largo High School from this area, played one year at Middle Tennessee State, then transferred to Kentucky Wesleyan. So the local guy comes home and makes a play. Well, this young guy is very, very strong. You see good leverage right there with number 58, and he's an outstanding football player for this team. He might be the best defensive lineman on the field tonight, Al. That was a loss of one. So third and 11 for the Bulls. Last time they had a third and long, they were able to pick it up. Barnhart under pressure. Gets away from one man. Tries to hit the fullback, and the pass is incomplete. They were looking for Otis Dixon. He's from Clearwater, but the pass was a little low, and Dixon was not able to make the catch. So this sets up fourth down, and so for the first time, South Florida. I'll tell you what, these fans can't be that upset with that first punt. Well, this is a full blitz, and he got flushed out of the pocket, and Kenyatta Jones got beat outside a little bit, and then, again, now they got some problems with that. Todd Omholtz, the punt for the South Florida Bulls. Jeremy Sleet back for Kentucky Wesleyan. By the way, Sleet is one of the best running backs in Kentucky Wesleyan history. He's a little guy, but he's a heck of a player. He's just 5'7", about 165. He calls a fair catch. And this will bounce around close to the 15-yard line, and the Bulls will pounce on it there. And once again, while the Bulls get excellent field position, Kentucky Wesleyan on the 38-yard punt will have to start with its backs right against the goal line. Well, you know, they have not had a, any possession tonight where they had really any chance. They've been backed up all night because of the special teams right off the bat with the opening kickoff, then a poor punt. They've never gotten field position back. It's really tough on an offensive football team. Look at this crowd. Some 46,000. They say it was a sellout at 4 o'clock this afternoon, and they had no idea what to expect from the student population, and students are still coming into the stadium right now. We probably need to explain that in their configuration of the stadium here, the end zone seats aren't being used. Look how close this is to a block. Well, that's a good effort, and I'll guarantee you, uh, Jim Levitt will have that punt team over there and get that straightened out in a hurry. So once again, a good crowd here. Again, more than 21,000 in season tickets. And Doug, we were talking about this before the game. Not only does that does that dwarf anything in Division I AA? 21,000 season tickets, that's good for most Division I programs. Most Division I programs would be thrilled to have 21,000 season tickets. That's amazing. From the 15-yard line, second offensive series for Kentucky Wesleyan. That sleep gets away from the initial rush. He gets it over the 25-yard line, and he fights his way close to the 30. You can see why this guy is a leading ball carrier, or one of the leading ball carriers in Panther history. And You know, he's a little guy, but he's a great inside runner. That really is his forte, and that was a nice tackle by Anthony Henry, the free safety from Fort Myers. And uh, Anthony Henry, I think, will develop eventually into a truly great safety for this program. Terrific block by the fullback. Good job by the safety. That's what... That's what he has to do. The safety has to make those open field tackles. The opening first down for Kentucky Wesleyan. Yeah. 
That is Tremaine Brenningham. He is also a senior, and he has very little running room. Brett Avery really, really stacked that play up beautifully. He just stuffed the tight end right here. You'll see Brett right in your picture here. Good technique, well coached from Rutgers, by the way. <laughs> and a great job of Brett of stuff on that play and forcing it back inside. So the coaching from up north <laughs> led the way on this. Absolutely. Oh, in this opening period here for the South Florida Bulls. They're getting help from everywhere. Second down from the 32 once again. Back to the running game and back to Brittingham. That's the first full blitz that I've seen from South Florida. I really expected them to blitz a little bit more. They, they normally in their package and their aggressive, aggressive idea of how to play defense, they'll normally blitz about at least, I would say, 40 to 50% of the time. And they hardly ever play straight defense. They'll always have some kind of a stunt going up front. And that's the philosophy that uh, Jim had such great success with at Kansas State. Third and three. We have a penalty. It was not the clock. Must have been some movement up front. Dead ball, encroachment on the offense. Five yard penalty. Boy, that has to be frustrating for John Johnson because you've got third down and three, and now you've got to go to something completely different. Now you got third and long. Let's go to Brian Ons. All right, guys, well, not only the football team had to get ready, but so did the cheerleaders. They had to come up with a whole new, different group of cheers. And I've got Sandra Vars and Andres Leon. Tell us a little bit about what you went through to get ready for this football season. Um, well, there was a tryout in the spring, and the squad worked through the summer. Uh, very hard to get ready for this football. And then there was a second tryout this fall to get some more girls and guys out there to get ready for this first day. It was a lot of hard work, but we look forward to it. We're having a great time. All right, Andres, tell us a little bit about uh, what it took to get ready. It took a lot of effort. We worked just as hard as the football players, and this is an incredible opportunity for us. All right, give We're us an example of one of your cheers here, will you? What are your notes? All right, B. You ready? B. B. U. B. U. L. S. B. 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 U. B. U. L. S. B. 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 U. B. U. L. S. B. 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 U. B. U. All that cheering help because this now sets up fourth and long. Charles Jackson back nearly blocked by the Bulls. And this is a long punt, punt by Rand. Rand takes it up to 22, gets away from one man, tries to get up the sidelines, left side. Excellent run by the freshman, Charles Jackson. He's out of Miami. You know, the thing I'm most surprised with Al, Kentucky Wesleyan has actually looked like the nervous team so far tonight, even though they're much more of a veteran team. Jim has done a good job preparing these young guys. So the Bulls on a 7-0 lead will have their third offensive series after this. And here is a reason why you want to get season tickets for these South Florida Bulls. Check out this run by Williams. Another great block by the fullback. This guy has got talent. I've been impressed with him all the way through. He really sees the field well and runs north and south. Shows good strength there after hit. So another first down for the South Florida Bulls. They are now at the 36-yard line, and this sets up first down from there. They've had the ball in Kentucky Wesleyan territory all night long. Excellent play by the Panthers there. That is Tony Lenton coming up from his strong safety position to make the tackle on that. Tony Lenton, a young guy all the way from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. He's, in fact, the nephew of the head coach. There's the head coach, it is John Johnson. So a loss of a yard and a half. And that'll set up second and long. 4-13 and counting, left to go. Quick pass, tried to hit Jackson. Jackson was open momentarily, he wasn't ready for the football. And I'll tell you, Raphael just uh, walked off the field with a wide angle here, three-step drop. There's some confusion there. There's a misread between the Charles and the uh, quarterback because that was a three-step drop. I think he should have just taken that off to a fade and tried to break it off inside. Williams leaves Jermaine Clemens, a new running back in for the Bulls. Barnhart, good protection. Now he's got Jackson at the 25, and that's good for a first down. Okay, Chad Barnhart, 
really put some mustard on that ball. Let's take a look at it. He's got a strong arm. I'm impressed. It looks like a similar pattern as what they had the last time. Just a little slant in. Just a little slant in. He found the soft spot in the zone. Here it is again. And uh, there's the arm. Former uh, draft choice of the Boston Red Sox. Barnhart is, and you can see why right there. He's got a great arm. Former catcher for the Red Sox. An eighth round pick from the 25. Another first down for the Bulls. That's the big fullback, Otis Dixon from Clearwater, and he gets a couple of yards. That's the first time he's touched the ball tonight. You know, right now we have Otis Dixon from Clearwater High School at fullback, Jermaine Clemens from Clearwater High School at halfback. These guys, and they grew up five doors apart from each other. I'm sure they've been playing together since about the fifth grade. Boy, this isn't a dream come true for them. I'm sure they've talked about this forever. Here they are in the same backfield as the Bulls here with 317 left to go in their first quarter of their first football game leading 7-0. That is Clemens in motion. The blitz and the Bulls beat it again. It's Hippolyte inside the 10. You know Hippolyte really looks like a wide receiver out there and what an advantage that is to your offense when your tight end can run like that. Five step drop by Chad. The cider comes free. That's just a heck of a job of the quarterback getting the ball off because they missed the picking up the blitz or else it was a hot raid. In any event, great job by Chad Barnhart. By the way, if you like this kind of action, you got the Jim Levitt Show on WTOG and Sports, Set, Sports, Sports Channel, excuse me, Saturday mornings this fall. Clemens fights his way to the five yard line. Barnhart so far, five of 10 for 77 yards. Two of his big passes have been to Hippolyte. Sean, you know, this linebacker, the middle backer for them, Sean Williams, is 250. And you can see right there, he uh, 56, he is a big fellow playing middle backer. And uh, once he gets his paws on, you're not going to go much further. Second down and goal to go from the five. The Bulls have three wide receivers in. Clemens, the only running back. Barnhart to the air. The slant, looking for the freshman, Marcus Rivers, and Barnhart was hot. Three-step drop, he had him open. That's the first throw he's missed. But I'll tell you what, that we'll give him one miss out of about 10 <laughs> so far, but uh, he's had a heck of a night so far. I'm sure that they saw that that was open and would not be surprised to see them come back with that in the red zone some point later tonight. Jim Levitt, again, has some experience at quarterback. In Barnhart, he has a young man that played his college football at South Carolina played 11 games last year. In fact, threw a touchdown pass as a freshman against the Florida Gators. Third and five from the five. Barnhart. He's got Clemens. Touchdown, South Florida Bulls. Good read. They came back with a smash corner routes. It was covered. Great job of getting the ball to Clemens in the flat. Nice job of sticking it in the end zone. And the other thing, if you're a coach, the Bulls are now four of five on third down. That has to be happy news for any program, but especially a first-year offense. Well, I'll tell you, they're doing exactly what they said. They're taking advantage of their quarterback and their wide receivers, which right now is the strength of this team. Riggs in to attempt the point after. Look at Dano. What and the Bulls run their lead to 14 nothing. What a great start for this program. One more look, here's Barnhart, and keep an eye on number 22, the running back, Clement. Excellent feel and toss here. Good touch on this ball. Also looked like Barnhart did a good job of looking off the defense. He was looking over the middle, then he goes out wide to his running back, and that had to set up the score. Al, that was his third option on the play. The slant and the smash were covered. The flare was the third option. Heck of a job and good protection by the offensive line to give him time to go to his third option. What does this mean for this young football team, a team that has never played before, to jump out to a 14-0 lead on John Johnson, very upset with his experienced team, down by two touchdowns? Well, I think he, he counted on his team getting off to a good start against this young team, and really just the opposite has happened, which is amazing in coaching. You never really know what to expect. The young guys appear to be the most poised up to this point in the game. So the five-yard touchdown pass, Barnhart to Clemens, and the Bulls lead it by a score of 14-0. So they're 
running backs have been carrying the load so far very early in the ballgame for the Bulls. That sleep takes it at the five, being chased, and he's brought down immediately by Bernard Brown. Excellent play once again by the special teams of the University of South Florida. Bernard really showed some burst there to chase him down actually from behind. Taking another look at the uh, touchdown here to cap this great drive. Excellent protection. Ivan Alcott, a heck of a job with the center, and he double caught the ball, but it really was a good throw. Nice catch. Touchdown. Here we go, Bulls. 65 yards. The opening drive was 66 for the touchdown, so two excellent drives in this opening period by the Bulls. Once again, Kentucky Wesleyan deep in its own territory from the 16, first and 10. Flag down, sleep on the draw, and there's a fumble on the play. And another flag goes down. I think this penalty as well as against Kentucky Wesleyan. Let's see how they, as they Jim Levitt agrees with you. That time, Kentucky Wesleyan went to a four wide receiver set. They tried to spread the field uh, to try to negate the speed of South Florida, open up a running lane inside to get something going. So you have your choice. The daily double, two penalties in one play. Can't you save one of those for later, later in the game here, Doug? Well, you know, it's just like getting strokes on a golf course. Don't you <laughs> wish you could save one for the next hole? Exactly. <laughs> You'd like to pull that out maybe next week against the Citadel. Yeah, exactly. John Johnson, again, his team came in with experience. This was a team that was 3-8 and eight a year ago. Had 16 starters returning, six on offense, but so far his offense has not been able to do much because it's been backed up. Ball. Illegal formation. We have a dead ball. Personal. Still be first down. So Kentucky Wesleyan backed up even further now. Now at the eight yard line. And they have first and 15. Horrible field position all night, and, and it's really due to their own mistakes. Third penalty for 15 yards for Kentucky Wesley, and the Bulls came in. We expected to see more penalties from this inexperienced team. Only one for 15, and that was the uh, that was the uh, personal foul. So now they're taking it back a few more yards. You know, in South Florida so far on defense has done just what uh, they advertised they were going to do. They're playing aggressive. The corners are up in your face coverage, playing very aggressive, aggressive defense. And off to the running back. That is Sean Ellis. And the Bulls are ready. Now talk about this defense for the South Florida Bulls. What is Jim Levitt, what is he trying to do with his defense? Well, he's trying again to recruit the kind of kids that Florida's blessed with that can really run. And that's what this whole defense is based on. Speed and quickness, aggressiveness, in your face, a lot of blitzing, a lot of stunning, great pursuit to the ball like we just saw in that last play. That makes great defense. Now second down and 18. Myers going to the air for one of the first times, just lays it up there, and coming back to make the catch with the flag going down is Marquise Churchwell. Excuse me, that is Jamie Thomas with the catch. And Anthony Henry got a little bit turned around. He made, there was some contact there. Let's see which way they call it. As with a lot of, with a lot of interference, you could go either way. His head is back to the ball. That really could be offensive interference as much as uh, defensive interference. Let's see which way they go with the Once ball. Once again, the defensive player. Defined. Yeah, they did call it down. Now the defensive player also has a right to the football. It looked like he was coming back to the football. I thought that was a bad call. Uh, when the defensive player has his head back to the football, uh, he, he can go for it just like anybody else. Now, but when you were a head coach at Rutgers, you never let an official know about a possible back call. No, I never complained at all. I right, got you. All right, from the 31, first down and 10. First time really to the air for J.D. Myers and Kentucky Wrestling. Another quick drop. Pumps once. He's going deep. Lays it out there. That may be intercepted. It is. Picked off by a man that was just burned a few moments ago. And there he is, Glenn, Glenn Davis. Davis. That's the first three deep zone they've been in tonight. And they caught him in a post route. And they misread the coverage. That's the first time they've been in a three deep tonight, though. 
and a great athletic play by Glenn Davis out of St. Pete, Dixie Hollins High School. Excellent timing, getting up to get that football. And Jim Lovett is a graduate of Dixie Hollins. You know what? He should get every great player that comes <laughs> out of there, I think. Well, you could. When you look at all the success that program has had, he would have quite a football team if he were to do that. So the Bulls coming right at you. First down, Clemens. Very little running room, and he's pulled down at the 35-yard line. Now, Davis, one of the experienced players in that secondary, you would think that Kentucky Wesleyan would want to stay away from here. He played nine games at Purdue. Well, I, I think right, right now they're just trying to get something going, and they probably didn't uh, plan on throwing the ball to that side. They had a go route to his right and a post to his left. So that is the end of the opening period, and the South Florida Bulls bring up a pair of touchdowns. We'll have more after this. We're getting ready for the second period of action. South Florida leading Kentucky Wesleyan at 14 nothing. You know, when Jim Levitt took this job, this was a guy coming home. He is from this area, still has a lot of ties here. Brian Onks is down on the field. He has a gentleman that knows this Jim Levitt very well. Brian? Down here with John Davis, the head coach of Clearwater Central Catholic. Grew up with Jim Levitt, played high school football with him. What does it mean to you, John, as a local coach, to have a program starting at USF and have a quality local guy like Jim Levitt leading the team? Uh, it's it's wonderful, first of all, to be able to just know Jim, and then second of all, to, to have them start a program in our neighborhood, and they've been able to open up the program to all the high school coaches in the area, and it's just been great. Now, rumor is that Jim Levitt was a great high school quarterback, but he had to wait till you graduated before he got his opportunity to throw the football at Dixie Hollins. Well, I tell Jim that he owes his career to me because after me, he looked pretty good. All right, guys, back up to you. Thank you. That is Cliff Dell on the long pass. What a move by Dell, still fighting his way. Now he gets down to the 15-yard line. You know, the Bulls, Levitt was known as a defensive coach, but it's been his passing game that has been clicking tonight so far, Doug. Well, I'm very impressed uh, with the offensive game plan that Mike Canales has come up with. Straight seven-step drop, fades. This, these are seam routes against the zone. Another good timing throw by Barnhart. And this young guy is a heck of a player. He's got great hands, shows good awareness in the open field here, and South Florida's threatening again, Al. Barnhart, 7 of 13 for 141 yards already. That one was good for 49. From the 16, Clemens gets it to the outside, breaks it. He's at the 5, fights his way. Touchdown, South Florida. Jermaine Clemens. Now that is some kind of 16-yard run. Shows great vision here right off the bat. Just an ISO lead play. Shows great vision. Sees the cutback. Inside move. Stop and stutter and go into the end zone. Terrific, terrific run by Jermaine Clemens out of Clearwater High School. Steve Riggs trying to make it three for three on point afters. And he drills it. Big play. The name of the game for the South Florida Bulls. They hit a 49-yard pass, and then it is Jermaine Clements with a 16-yard run. And the Bulls drive 65 yards in three plays. It took them all of 61 seconds, and the Bulls run their lead to 21 nothing over the Panthers. Jermaine Clemens came in the number two running back for the South Florida Bulls, but he's number one right now with two touchdown runs. Well, I'm a little bit concerned uh, that the uh, that Raphael Williams has been out of the game. I don't know what his injury is, but that's a heck of an effort by Jermaine Clemens. Injuries could get this program faster than anything because they just don't have a lot of depth, though. They're calling it now a 15-yard touchdown run. That is the second touchdown for Clemens. His first actually came on a pass. Riggs kicks off deep into the end zone, and the Panthers say, ain't no way we're going to try bringing this back. Well, he really missed his first uh, two kickoffs. He's a good-looking young fan right there at USF, and I guarantee you, a couple more years, boy. Very young, but very good-looking cheerleader excellent, this year. Excellent, South looking, excellent cheerleader potential right and there. And a lot to cheer for right now for this young man, Jim Levitt. The South Florida Bulls have jumped out to a 21-0 lead on the Panthers of Kentucky Wesleyan. 
John Johnson's team has not had anything resembling field position this entire game. And this is really the best field position they've had starting off at the 20. Well, it is. And USF is uh, stemming their defense, and boy, they caused a major problem right there for Kentucky West. They stemmed at the last second and went into a three deep and stemmed the interior, and there was a missed blocking assignment there, and that's the reason you stem. Sean Hay with the tackle he brings down. Scott Dykes, loss of one on the play. Sean Hay, young man out of Jupiter High School. Once again, a second and long for Kentucky Wesleyan. They've been faced with that all evening. How about that for a blitz? I think that was Brett Avery. They stemmed into a different front. They covered the tight end, brought the heat from outside. Quickness showed. Great job. Avery, once yeah. again, from Rutgers. So great coaching once again on that play. He learned that from up north again. Well, he made a real good inside move, and uh, because they stemmed late and had an outside rusher coming from outside, poor recognition by the offensive tackle. Heck that, of a job by Brett. That was supposed to be a quick three-step <laughs> drop-back pass, and uh, Avery was right there. A different type of handoff. They get it to Sleet. Sleet very close to that first down. I believe he has it. Looked like the old Statue of Liberty play. Well, it was, it was a slip draw play. They put the ball in from the other side. It really did catch USF uh, by surprise here. Let's take a look. This is an interesting play. Watch this handoff. All the way around the back side. <laughs> a slip draw. Got the corner on USF. Had, uh, obviously, these kids have never seen that play before. Nice job of the corner, fighting it off and keeping the ball contained. Safety coming up, making the hit. It's good for a 17-yard gain, really the first big play for Kentucky Wesleyan. Brittingham taken down immediately by the Bulls. You know, Brittingham is another big back. Uh, he's a 5'11", 240-pound senior. And uh, now they're starting to go with their bigger backs and trying to power the football and settle their team down. 21 zip, they have to do something here positive. Terrence Smiley with the tackle for the South Florida Bulls. Again, plenty to cheer about here early on in the contest. The Bulls with a 21-0 lead, scoring on three of their first four possessions. From the 34, second and long. The pitch. Sleet gets around the corner. And he's nailed by Sean Hay once again. Hay has been making a lot of tackles. Sean Hay really is the biggest of the defensive line. Really, the, uh, the Bulls' defensive line at, uh, you know, 205, 220, 225, uh, 235. But Hay, Hay is the biggest at 255. I Good job of right at up. you. I'd say, hey, really moves well to get down the line of scrimmage and make this play. He moves well for a big guy. He's got a bright future. From the 37, the fake. Myers under pressure. Boy, he's got quick feet, but not quick enough. And the Bulls bring him down behind the line of scrimmage. Yet another sack for the South Florida Bulls. Speed is the name of the game. That's why University of Florida is so good. That's why Miami's been so good, and that's why this team will be good eventually here on defense. They're not bad right now, but things look like they're opening up, and the speed just converges to the ball. Once again, it's your man, Brady, Brett Avery, with the sack. And once again, this forces fourth down for Kentucky Wesleyan. Ryan Brem back to punt. Charlie Jackson back to receive for South Florida. He'll just let it bounce. It'll go out of bounds at the 26-yard line. We have 10.47 left to go before halftime. The South Florida Bulls, bald-headed and all, lead 21-0. The Bulls get a one-yard touchdown run by Raphael Williams on their opening drive. And look at the new home for the South Florida Bulls next year. That'll be the new stadium, the new home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And of course, also the South Florida Bulls, they'll be playing in this stadium next year. They sure will. And in the configuration next year in the stadium, uh, they'll have 41,000 seats. They won't use the upper deck, so it'll be a great size stadium for USA. From the 26th, first and 10. Barnhart on the fake. Has time, he finds his receiver. 
but it is dropped by Charles Jackson incomplete. We were talking about the scoring plays early on. Again, Williams on a one-yard run. That was on their opening drive. The next drive, they get Barnhart to Jermaine Clemens for the 14-0 lead after one. And then early in the second period, a 15-yard run, Jermaine Clemens for the 21-0 lead. I'll tell you what, if Paul Griffin ordered a night for his first football game, this had to be it. I bet Paul's pumped up tonight. I know he is. What a setting. From the 26, second down and long. Barnhart under pressure, just lays it out there for his big fullback, Otis Dixon, and the freshman from Clearwater takes it out close to the 30-yard line. You know, one of the real keys for this program in the future is going to be all the players in the state of Florida, this Otis Dixon being one of them from Clearwater High School, a tornado. Good athlete, good hands. Got to tuck the ball a little bit better, but he's a fullback there. He wasn't going to make anybody <laughs> miss, was he? He was searching them out. <laughs> How about those numbers? For Great. one quarter of football, very impressive. Great start for the young guy from Lake Wales. Third and long. Barnhart again to the air, under pressure, and he is pulled down at the 20-yard line. The, the tackle by Ramsey Rasmussen. He had two sacks one year ago. This is a matchup that I'm worried about here with the freshman offensive tackle going up against a, a veteran guy, and he just gets beat there. Uh, but that was not Kenyatta. That was number 75. That's Cedric Bell. Cedric Bell he got beat, which is a little bit of a surprise. He's got to set his feet back a little bit better. He set too much on the line of scrimmage. He's got to work back a little bit. Todd Elmholtz, the punt. He's standing at his own six. Down to six seconds on the play clock. A high spiral. Sleep will let it hit. Then he picks it up, and he pays for it. Brian Newsom with the tackle on special teams for the South Florida Bulls. Uh, Jeremy really should have been able to field that ball uh, in the air. Uh, you don't want the balls bouncing and rolling down the field if you can possibly get to them. And he really should have, been, should have been able to get to that football. John Johnson's team again backed up deep. Now starting at the 26, some of the best field position that the Panthers have had this evening here with 9.02 left to go before halftime. A 52-yard punch for Umholtz. First down. Bulls lead it 21-0. They stop the play. Very and the Bulls called timeout. All right, very alertly, too. Uh, they had a mix-up in their coverage. They had a slot receiver uncovered out there. And uh, Glenn Davis very alertly called timeout. We have 9.02 left to go before halftime. The Bulls, a big opening night, 21-0 over Kentucky Wesleyan. 9.02 left to go before halftime. And is that a thing of beauty? This makes you want to come out and see a football game. Oh, it's Packed a house, gorgeous night. Beautiful stadium. It's quite a setting, it really is. The sold out football game for the University of South Florida. Well over 46,000 in-house. Again, they've closed off the end zones for the most part, but there's one part of the end zone on the other side of the field that's got quite a few students in it. J.D. Myers in Kentucky Wesleyan, now with first and 10 from the 26. Myers gets hit immediately. Might have been a fumble on the play as well. The Bulls say yes, and the Bulls have the football. That was Brett Avery again. Boy, is he having a great, great night. That's a mark on the fumble recovery. Sean Hay on the hit. Oh. And look at Mark right there to pick up the pieces. Terrific job by Sean Hay. They jumped into a nickel defense against that four wide receiver set and brought the heat. Down he goes, another great opportunity for the Bulls. Vasse Mark, 6'2", 220, out of Miami. Let's go down to Brian Ox. He has an injury report for us, Brian. Right now, Al, Raphael Williams, number 28, the starting tailback out with a sprained ankle. He said he's gonna be out to at least halftime to look at it, possibly tape him up. That's why Jermaine Clements has got an opportunity to shine and score a couple of touchdowns. And Thanks. there is Clemens right there. He'll take it in for another touchdown, South Florida. Well, this 
this crowd is just loving this. What a great start for the birth of this program. 19 yards for Jermaine Clemens on the draw. Lead draw play, wow. What a block by the fullback, Otis Dixon. What a great block for his teammate from Clearwater High School. Clemens got into the end zone very quickly. Riggs in. For the point after, it is good. And the Bulls are bullish when it comes to offense. Three touchdowns for Clemens. And the Bulls run their lead to 28-0. You know, Otis uh, Dixon tonight has really been impressive to me uh, on the lead to plays, on the toss plays. He's really been a tremendous blocker out there for the tailbacks. Next week, the South Florida Bulls hit the road for their very first road game, and this will be a tough test. They take on the Citadel, another Division I AA team, and the Bulls will have their hands full. You can see that right here on Channel 44 and, of course, Sports Channel Florida. You can also listen to the game. If you cannot catch us on TV, catch it on radio. On 820, the team, Jim Lauk, Mark Robinson, one of your former players, helping out on the radio broadcast. I'll tell you what, Mark Robinson made me look like a pretty good coach for a while. He was an outstanding safety for me at Kansas City. And of course, uh, we traded for him when I came down here with the Bucks. He's a great player here as well. You know what's great about tonight? It's a terrific turnout by the students at USF. And they're having a great time. They're going to be back, I guarantee you. How about when they came into the building? You could hear them coming into the building an hour before the game. It was incredible. That was the, the noise level. An hour before the game in here was really something. Slate takes it at the goal line. He punches out, and he's got a lot of green. All he has to do is beat the kicker. He gets around Riggs. One man after him, that's Glenn Davis, and Davis makes him cut inside, but he still gets down to near the 15-yard line. How about the play by Davis to slow him down and allow his teammates to get him, but we have a flag on the field. Well, he certainly saved the touchdown there. Excellent kick, poor lane discipline by USF, and that, again, is typical of young players in a game like this. Good kick, poor lane discipline, Huge seam opened up to the left, and that little guy's a good back. Now they're calling it a personal foul on the South Florida Bulls, so this will put Kentucky Wesleyan even closer to the goal line. 81 yards on the return. That's a case of a little bit of over-enthusiasm, and of course, Jim is certainly not going to like that. I'm speaking of Jim Levitt, of course, the head coach. And now that's the second penalty they've had like that tonight. The kids are excited. You have to be able to control your emotion. After distance penalty. First down. The personal foul, and they're inside the 10. Kentucky Wesleyan with its first opportunity for a score. Jim Levitt trying to cheer on his defense. Defense, of course, his calling card. Myers in trouble. Gets away from one defender. Still trying to fight his way to the line of scrimmage, and it gets very little. Let's go down to the field. Brian Ox has the athletic director at USF. That's right, we have athletic director Paul Griffin. And Paul, when you were putting this program together on the drawing board, did you ever in your wildest dreams imagine a setting like this and all culminating in an opening game like this with this huge crowd? Well, in your dreams, you kind of think of things like this, but for it to come to a reality is kind of surprising and very pleasing. The support from the Tampa community has been outstanding. I think any young man that's watching this at home would love to play in this kind of environment. We're very, very proud. How do you see the program off to a great start, leading 28 to nothing right now? But this is just the beginning. Talk about the plan to eventually get to Division One. Well, you know, we're a one double-A program right now because of our need to establish attendance criteria. Obviously, we've already shattered every attendance expectation anyone could have. So now it'll be a matter of letting our kids mature a little bit and building the schedule after the turn of the century. And a conference affiliation, is that in the plans also? Well, we certainly hope that our opportunities in Conference USA, which is our home for all of our other sports, is where we'll be after the turn of the century. Now, the athletic program here is in great shape. The women's volleyball team nationally ranked, and I think as far as the entire athletic program, it's never been in better shape than it is right now. Well, we're very proud. We have a lot of very good young student athletes who do well in the classroom, do well on the field. We had five teams go to the NCAA playoffs last year, and 
53 percent of our kids had over a 3.0 so they're good young people and we're very very proud and the great thing to see is that the entire athletic program all the coaches have rallied around the football program realizing how important the visibility of the football program will bring is to the program but everybody's wearing green everybody's on the same team and everybody understands that we've got to pull together to make it work thank you very much continued success back upstairs to Allen Doug second and goal from the nine Kentucky Wesleyan they called the timeout The play action. Myers in trouble. Once again, gets just inside the 10 before he's pulled down by the South Florida Bulls. Brian Wilson chasing him down to make the tackle. Look how far Wilson had to chase oh, he him. Had, he had a lot of ground to make up. Great job for the young guy from Tarpon Springs. Palm Harbor, Florida with the Tarpon Springs High School. You don't think he's too excited to be back here playing in Florida, do you? Third down. They have it marked at the eight-yard line. Third and goal to go from the eight. Remember, all this set up by an 81-yard kickoff return. Myers, the pump fake, tries to lay it out there for Sleep, nearly picked off by Roy Manns. You know, Manns was just turned around the wrong way. It would have been interesting if he would have caught it. Which way would he go? Well, I'll tell you what, if he could have got himself squared away, he'd have been going the other way and he probably would have scored. Another blitz, uh, good job of the safety pulling off. That's legal in the backfield, good contact with him, almost picked it off, that's a great job. That's called flare control. When you come on a blitz, if the back flares to you, you gotta pull off the blitz and take him. That's a heck of a job by Ray Manns. And you talk about the great speed of this team. Manns was showing it right there. From the 15, this is a 25-yard attempt. Adam Kilgore. And the kick is good. That is his first field goal in his career at Kentucky Wesleyan. 6.35 left to go before halftime. The Panthers get on the board with the 25-yard field goal. And if you're Jim Levitt, you have to be happy that after giving up the 81-yard kickoff return, your defense holds and only gives up the field goal. Well, you, you're very pleased with your defense right here. We're going to take a look at this field goal to exactly see uh, you know, if it was down the middle of the pipes or not. Whoa! Oh, it went right through How about hands. Anthony Henry? Up high, went up very high. I tell you what, Seth Greenberg may want him on the basketball team. How about that vertical? He, he is an outstanding athlete, was a great track athlete in high school as well, and he certainly uh, showed it there. District MVP in track, 6'6", six, six high jump. He got almost all of it right there. They're selling all kinds of stuff right now, even programs here. All kind. You don't think that program's going to be worth something? The first program from the first game here at the University of South Florida. Kilgore, the 25-yard field goal. Bulls still lead, 28-3. And Kilgore will kick it off. That's Charlie Jackson at the eight. If he can get around the corner, he's got some room. But that's a big if. Pull down at the 26. Well, you know, we're not even through a half of football yet, and you've already seen some young guys that really stand out for this team. Anthony Henry, we just, just saw his athletic ability on defense. Uh, you've got to be impressed with the quarterback, the running backs, Charlie Jackson, you've got to be impressed with him. And I think the offensive line, I think he's doing a very good job for as young as they are. 28-3 from the 26. Barnhart, 7 of 14 so far, 133 yards. Quickly to the air. Tries to hit Clemens, and it was behind Clemens, incomplete. Yeah, something was out of sync there with Clemens and the tight end. They were too close together. Somebody busted a pattern or got knocked off of their pattern. One of the two. Barnhart really won this job. He came in a little bit late compared to Lance Hokey. Lance Hokey, a transfer from Austin P. He came in and was immediately the early starter, but Barnhart has taken such hold of this offense that he has been very impressive and really stole that starting job. Well, you know, Lance Hokey has a lot of ability too. They really have good depth at the quarterback spot right now. Second down from the 26. Barnhart, excellent protection. He's got Dell. Dell already has one big 
play. Looking for more over midfield into Kentucky Wesleyan territory. Well, you can see how that young guy had a thousand yards receiving in high school. He is very, very smooth, good on his feet, great hands, did a nice job of coming back to the ball. He's a very polished receiver at this stage of his career. A 26 yard gain. It's a great view of what Chad sees. Perfect throw. I mean, perfect throw. You'd love to play receiver for a guy that can, uh, has got that kind of accuracy. Barnhart, 9 of 17 for 159 yards. That's Clemens. Already with three touchdowns, he fumbles, and the offensive lineman coming up to cover it, that's Cedric Bell. Heads up play by Cedric Bell. That was a, because really, Kentucky Wesleyan was in position to come up with that ball. Heads up by Cedric. And it's good for another first down. <laughs> One of those good news, bad news type of plays. Bad news, you fumble. Good news is you recover and you get the first down. It was not classic technique in terms of rolling on the football, but, you know, offensive linemen aren't used to doing that very often. We have a timeout on the field. 534 left to go before halftime. The Bulls lead it by a score of 28 to 3. Again, the Bulls have been very consistent. Two touchdowns in the opening period, two more in the second, and it's been Clemens. Raphael Williams leaves very early on with an ankle injury, and you wouldn't think that this young team would have much depth, yet the Bulls come out with their second string tailback. He already has three touchdowns. Well, you know, I, I've been to practice a lot, and I I really expected Raphael to be good, but Jermaine has really been impressive. Once again, 534 left to go before halftime. The Bulls lead it by a score of 28-3. The Bulls leading 28-3. Once again, the Bulls have the football, and they are on the march once again. From the 34. First down for the Bulls. Clemens, the lone running back. Already has three touchdowns. Play action. Barnhart did a good job of getting rid of the football. Big time pressure from the Panthers and Barnhart makes a play. Coming up at halftime, we'll take a look at the key plays so far in this game. We'll talk to a gentleman that has really made a lot of this evening possible. That is Skip Glass from Franz World Diversified. We will talk with Coach Levitt and have the stats and the highlights all coming up at halftime with what has been a very successful first half for the South Florida Bulls. Barnhart, 9 of 18, 159 yards, and the one touchdown. That was incomplete. Classic example by Mr. Jackson of running before you catch the football. His eyes left the ball looking downfield. And, uh, you know, they all do it. And as a coach, you preach and preach and preach. But even in pro football, it's just a natural tendency to do that. Jackson was the number one receiver for these Bulls during the preseason scrimmages. You see, he's extremely dangerous on reverses. Caught a 70-yard touchdown pass on the very first play in the night scrimmage for this football team. Third and long for the Bulls. Barnhart, again, excellent protection. Goes right over the middle. He has his tight end. That's Hippolyte, who's already had a couple of big plays tonight. But he's well short of the first down. That was a five-step timing throw. Let's take a look at it here. You see the quarterback take the five-step timing throw inside release. Reads the linebacker gone, hooks up inside, just didn't get enough depth to get the first down. Now, Hippolyte has to do a better job of knowing where the markers are. Exactly, that exactly. Young player, they, they, they learn. This would be a great learning experience for him. From the 27, they have to get just over the 25. This is fourth down and two. To the air, Barnhart. He's got his man, Jackson. Let's go for the first down and much more. Takes it near the 10. First down, South Florida. Outstanding call by Chico Mike Canales. Sat down, read the zone, sat down on the soft spot. Good timing throw by Barnhart. Let's take a look at it. Good protection up front. I'm impressed with the line. Good job by Cedric Bell. Sit down right there in the soft spot of the zone, make the cut back, comes back outside, and just loses his feet a little bit. How about a gutsy call, the pass on fourth and two? 
Uh, and you got a quarterback like Barnhart, you're not afraid to do that. From the 11. Up the middle. Very little running room. Once again, it's Clemens. That was a trap and, uh, and some kind of a confusion up front. I think that Kentucky Wesleyan stemmed right into it. You know, I really like the South Florida uniforms. I think they really are sharp in this setting. Beautiful, especially that gold just seems to reflect this light. Of course, the dark green. Look at that, 10 of 20, 181 yards, one touchdown. We're still in the first half. Excellent start. Play action. Barnhart rolling left side. He's got his man very close to the goal line. Uh, Kevin, Kevin White. White, he is a backup fullback into the ball game for the first time. Very close to scoring. Play action boot with the drag coming across the field from the fullback. Very, very tough to cover. Good job, Jackson, looking for the cutback block. Physical play on the goal line here. Good job by White of holding on to the football. Be very easy to let it go and turn the ball over close to the goal line, but he hangs on. The Bulls are knocking at the door again. They already have 28 points. Jumbo set. Dixon, Williams in the backfield. Dixon from Clearwater, touchdown, South Florida. Just a straight dive out of the jumbo set. When I say jumbo, that's what we call a three tight end set. Most of the pro teams do it as well. Good physical football. Get off the line of scrimmage, north and south, knock it in the end zone. Excellent, excellent way to finish off that drive. The 46,000 strong, a lot of young fans, a lot of fans here of all ages to see this football team jump out to an early lead on Kentucky Wesleyan. Riggs trying to keep a perfect night, and he does it again. 2.47 left to go in the first half, and if you are Jim Levitt, do you really expect to jump out like this in your very first game? No, there's no way you expect this, and I gotta be honest with you, I'm very shocked as well. I'm very, very impressed with the execution of this young, young football team tonight, especially with the offensive and defensive lines. I really thought Kentucky Wesleyan would be, would be able to hang in a little better. One more look at the touchdown. Otis Dixon, the fullback. Nothing fancy there. Straight off football, man on man blocking. Knock it in the end zone. Good job, Otis. Got penetration here, which you don't want to have, but gets up over the top. Touchdown, South Florida. Once again, this has to be the longest drive of the night, 74 yards, 348, 74 yards in three minutes and 48 seconds. That's moving the football. Well, they had a couple of good throws to the uh, wide outs. Uh, Jackson again continues to impress. Of course, the key conversion on fourth down was a big play. Uh, a lot of courage to make that call. Good execution by the offense. This team is very, very well prepared. Uh, Jim Levitt hired a heck of a staff here as a defensive staff. Staff Rick Kravitz, the defensive coordinator, a veteran defensive coordinator, former high school teammate. He's got uh, a lot of uh, former pro players on the staff. Uh, Andre Waters, Kevin Patrick. Excellent, excellent staff, very well coached football team. Churchwell on the return, pulled down at the 22. John Johnson's team shocked right now, down 35-3. Once again, they opened the season a year ago at, at uh, Western Kentucky and lost 66-0. So they are used to seeing Division I AA opponents. So we have an injury on the field. That is Bernard Brown, who made a big play in special teams earlier tonight. We sure hope he's not hurt seriously. Coach Levin is concerned as well. Did you know that John Johnson is a youper? Uh, pardon me? The coach at Kentucky Wesleyan is a youper. A, a youper. A youper. You got me there. That means he's from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And he's proud to be from the Upper Peninsula. And all those people up there, they call themselves youpers. They call themselves youpers. Yes, sir. Huh? And they're proud of it. Thank goodness. Good, good to see Bernard up and off the field. Bernard Brown, fine. Again, he's been a key man on special teams for the Bulls. 
Bulls are up 35 3, 235 left to go before halftime. The Bulls with nearly 300 yards of offense already. Quick pass, Churchwell hit immediately. The tackle by Manns. Manns is playing a heck of a football game. Well, that was an adjustment by South Florida when Kentucky Wesley in motion to a triple. They went to a three deep zone, which put Manns up there in a strong safety position and a good position to make that play. And listen to this. The Bulls have 298 yards of offense. Kentucky Wesleyan with 69. That's domination. 2.04 left to go in the first half. Myers, the fake, trying to go deep. He's got Churchwell, and they're saying he was out of bounds. He got pressed into the corner uh, by the safety. Anthony Henry, and they were in a two deep that time. He got pressed into the corner, and he just simply ran out of room on the sideline. That sets up third and long for Kentucky Wesleyan. This is a team with three wins a year ago, 28, or make that 23-8 over Bethel, 40-11 over Sue Bennett College, and 51-21 over Mount St. Joseph's. Now, this is great exposure for their program, though. I sure, I'm, you know, I know they don't like the result right now, but this is a great experience for the kids and good exposure for the school. The draw, Brenningham. He fights his way near the 30-yard line. But well short of the first down. Of course, next week could be a completely different story for the South Florida Bulls. They take on a Division I AA team on the road at the Citadel. And you can see it right here on Channel 44 and Sports Channel Florida. I might add a good 1AA program. The Citadel has a, the Southern Conference is the premier 1AA conference in the country. And the Citadel, that's great tradition up there in that program. Uh, it'll be a little bit different for him next Saturday night. Myers three for six so far, only 28 yards in the air for Kentucky Wesleyan, a team that loves to pass the football. Jackson back to receive the punt. And it appears that Kentucky Wesleyan will be penalized for delay of game. Dead ball, delay, five yard penalty, repeat fourth down. I'd like to see Charlie Jackson really get some room to see what he can do in the open field. He obviously has real skill with the football in the open field. That's why Coach Levitt has him back there returning these punts. And uh, he's going to be a real threat for them, I think, as the year goes on. Bram, the punter, standing at his own nine. A very low kick. This could be that return, Doug. Takes it at the 40. Tries to break it outside. But good job by Kentucky Wesleyan of stringing it out. Charlie had him pinned into the sideline, and, and Charlie needs to get it north and south just a little bit better than that. It was just a little bit too much dancing on that one. But, you know, this will be a great opportunity for this staff to correct uh, some of these minor problems and uh, as they go into a, a real, real tough game next week. A 39-yard punt. The South Florida Bulls already two touchdowns in the opening period. Three more here in the second. They have 42 seconds to add to their 35-3 lead in their very first half of competition. USF has dominated offensively in this game. Quick pass, he had a wide receiver. That is Marcus Rivers, and he was looking at touchdown. Oh, Marcus is, that's a shame because they, they really would have got that one in the end zone. Terrific shot, terrific throw. Hit him right in the numbers. Oh, he's got to be sick right now. And it's interesting. You talk to people on this South Florida team, they will tell you that this young man, Rivers, he is a freshman out of Panama City, may have some of the softest hands on this football team. He didn't show it there. He's also the fastest of the wide receivers, too, and he did show some burst there to get open. Second down, 35 seconds. Barnhart, again, all kinds of time. Once again, tries to go to Rivers, and it's incomplete. Well, he went off to his third option. They were in a three-deep zone. They had the post covered downfield, so he dumped the ball off to the back and, uh, and just uh, wasn't able to make the play. Barnhart with an incredible first half. I'll tell you what, those are great stats for an entire ball game when you do it in the first half in your very first game out of the gate. That's saying something. 
When I've watched uh, this young man in practice, Barnhart I'm speaking of, the most, the thing I'm impressed with the most is his poise. Third and long with 30 seconds left to go in the first half. Barnhart looking for Dell, overthrows him. And that'll set up fourth down with 25 seconds remaining before halftime. That's really one of the few poor throws he's made, and, and uh, they had a blocking assignment problem. He had a guy coming in uh, untouched. And I'm sure that had something to do with that poor throw. It usually does. You can hear those big guys thundering uh, they, down upon you. You can hear them. You can see them. You can, you can smell, smell them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're close to halftime. You can smell them. Todd Umholtz back to punt, back to receive. Fred Hager. 25 seconds left to go in the first half. Beautiful punt. High. Trying to hit the corner. But Umholtz nailed it. Kentucky Wesleyan will get the ball at the 20 yard line with 17 seconds left to go in the first half. A 54 yard punt for Umholtz. You know, early in the game, Unholtz uh, struggled really with his first punt or two, but he's been very, very consistent since then. And if he can keep that up the whole year, he'll be a heck of a punter here. That has to be a lot of help for this young defense. Defense that has kind of gained confidence throughout this game. Really, the only time they gave up a score was after the long 81-yard kickoff return. Yeah, and really the only big play they've given up was the one slip draw, which they hadn't seen before and kind of surprised them. From the 20, with 17 seconds left to go in the first half, Myers takes off. Big time hit over there by the Bulls. <laughs> he is brought down Marcus by Demetrius Smith. Woods, or was it? I thought it was Marshall Smith. The Luther Smith Award. But that is the end of the first half. It is Woods with the big time hit on J.D. Myers. As that ends the first half, or shall we say a bang? I, I'd say so. This guy, Demetrius Woods, is the one player up front for him that I think uh, within a year or so will be a great player. He's got tremendous explosiveness and burst, which you saw right there. Let's go down to Brian Angst. He's on the field. Brian. John Johnson, John, a tough first half for, for your club, victimized by some big plays. Yeah, the better team is ahead right now. They're executing a lot better. They got a lot, lot, lot better players than we have, but we're going to come out second half. We made some mistakes. Hopefully, we can do a little better in the second half, but uh, they're an awful good football team. What will you tell your team in the locker room at halftime? Oh, we just got to get better for the second half. Forget the score, go on in and play better football. Stop making a little mistakes. We had a couple kids open in the end zone, didn't hit them. We're just going to go out and try to win the second half right now. That's all we can do. Thanks, coach. Good luck, all second right. half. Thanks. Back upstairs to you, Alan Doug. The opening half of football for the South Florida Bulls rated a big success. The Bulls lead at 34, I uh, make that 35-3. We'll have our halftime show of much more right after this. The South Florida Bulls winning the football game on the scoreboard and also on the stat sheet. Let's take a look at the aerial first half stats. The Bulls have dominated from the opening kickoff and from the first time they touched the football. Here's a look at the first half highlights and here's the opening score. That is Williams on the one yard run. That was on their opening drive, capped a 66 yard drive in 11 plays, seven nothing Bulls. And then the Bulls come right back. Barnhart lays it out there for the second string running back. Jermaine Clemens run that lead up to four nothing. In the second period, it is Clemens again. How about this for a run? Right up the middle. Clements also from Clearwater High School. Great effort, great run, and he gives the Bulls a 21-0 lead. And then later in the second period, it is Clemens again. Excuse me, that is Dixon on the one-yard run. That was the final score of the second half, or excuse me, of the second period. And the Bulls take a 35-3 lead over Kentucky Wesleyan. Let's take a look now at our Trans World stats here in the first half. And the Bulls have dominated just like they have dominated the football game, Doug. Well, they really have. And the, and the possession is a little bit surprising, but they've just scored so fast. <laughs> that, uh, that's, that's, been a, that's really hurt their time of possession. But if you look at the rushing yards, they're double there. 
uh, 27 to 192 passing, 298 yards to 76. Wow, I mean, that's a dominating performance in the first half. Uh, they just have to be thrilled with the performance of this, such a young football team. I, I, I really thought that they'd struggle a little bit in the first quarter, but that they just jumped right out. Very well prepared football team. Tremendous job, and here comes the stampede of the Bulls on the field for the second half, and away we go. Very impressive first half. Again, rolling up nearly 300 yards of offense and the 35-3 advantage. Again, not bad for your very first half of football. Uh, I guess not bad at all. Well, let's go down to the field. Brian Onks has Jim Levitt. Here with Coach uh, Jim Levitt and Coach, a great first half. Could you ever imagine your team coming out and playing this well in their first ball game? Well, I, I'm not sure. I, I keep thinking about our kickoff team at one time. That wasn't very good, and they had the one shovel pass that went down the field. Our execution, I'm not really concerned about the wins and losses right now. I'm more concerned about execution. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm fairly happy, but I, I still want to execute better. We, we need to do a better job in our kicking game especially. What did you, what did you tell the kids at halftime? Uh, you know, we need to go out and, and play fundamental football and play hard and make sure that we uh, play hard every snap and, and do a better job with, like I said, our execution. Good luck second Thank half. You. Back upstairs to you guys. Doug, a typical football coach. He's up 35-3, and he's upset with the one big play that his special teams have given up. <laughs> but you know what? He's exactly right. He's really concerned with the big picture of this program right now with such a young program. He wants to establish the discipline and he wants to establish the academic integrity uh, everything right off the bat brought to you by GTE the official telecommunications consultant to the NCAA and by Pepsi generation next We're getting ready now for the second half of action. Again, the Bulls lead it by a score of 35-3. Kentucky Wesleyan won the toss at the beginning of the ball game, deferred to the second half. So the Bulls will kick off. You see Lance Hokey there on the sidelines. Could we be seeing Lance Hokey in the second half? He is the second quarterback. And that is a bad sight if you're a South Florida Bulls fan. That is the number one running back, Raphael Williams, who was hurt, hurt very early in the ball game. Now, running back coach Calvin McGee, who played for us for the Bucks, won't be happy to see that. Riggs kicks off. Churchwell takes it at the eighth. Gets away from one South Florida Bull tackle. And then he snowed under very near the 15-yard line. Well, Coach Levin will be happy to see that. He was not pleased with that one kickoff coverage. And kind of the earmark, if you can get him inside the 20-yard line as a coach, then you've got good coverage and good kicking, and you're pleased with that. Jim Levitt again, as you heard right here just a few moments ago, was not happy with his special teams in the first half. He gave up a long 81-yard kickoff return that set up the only score for Kentucky Wesleyan on a field goal. The defense. Taking over now. John Ellis. John Ellis. Brian Wilson really is the one that made that play. Did a good job of forcing that football from his outside linebacker spot. Read the play very well. Attacked it, which in the style of their defense. And let's take a look at it right here. And you'll see Brian Wilson take on the full fullback right here. Bounce the play back inside of him. And now the pursuit can make the play. Gain of four in the play, sets up second down and six. From the 24. Once again, Ellis gets stopped right at the 25 by a host of South Florida Capitals. Good adjustment. They're coming out trying to uh, take advantage of the USF pursuit, running the counter play, but an excellent read. Run, bringing both the backside guard and tackle. Nothing going. Excellent job by the outside backer. Good pursuit. Boy, look at those green jerseys get to the ball. That's fun to see as a coach. One, two, three, four, five South Florida Bulls around the football. Sets up third down and five. Kentucky Wesleyan has had a poor percentage on third down plays tonight. South Florida, excellent offensively. Meyer hit as 
as he threw the pass intended to sleep incomplete and once again the busiest man on the field tonight for Kentucky Wesleyan the punter Brian Bram another blitz that they couldn't handle tried to get the flare out but got hit as he threw the football excellent pressure now Adam Kilgore will be punting Brem punted in the first half Kilgore the kicker now lining up Charlie Jackson standing on his own 42 to receive and that's a long punt Once again, you mentioned he needs to do more of the north-south type of running as the kicker, Kilgore, is hurt. You know, and Brem had a sore knee. He's also a starter at cornerback, and he had a sore knee come into the game. Now, this is their second punter. I don't know who comes next. Well, you know, that, that's a tough call there. Uh, he's really in a position to protect himself. I, I don't know. That, that's an in-betweener. Hope he's not hurt seriously. That was Woods, Demetrius Woods on the hit. Kilgore is still down on the field. Again, he is the place kicker as well for this Kentucky Wesleyan team. He's provided a 25-yard field goal tonight. So the last thing John Johnson wants to do is to lose his kicker for the season. Opening game of the season, you know, the, the losing the game is one thing, but if you lose a lot of players in the process now, that, that really is a very tough start to the season. And that is one of the dangers when you go up in division like this, playing a Division One AA team when you're a Division Two. Let's go down to the field, and Brian Onks right, is around a lot of students, a lot of Guys, fans. here in the student section, we have uh, Natalie, Leslie, and Dina. Talk about coming back to school and uh, having a football team to cheer for. Well, you know, so this is the first year that USF had a football team. I'm very excited. It's like we're winning, and I love this game. You guys pumped up about the new football team yeah, here? Yeah, definitely. definitely. This is the best. I think, I, I think this is so great. We're finally, you know, getting up there. Soon we'll be playing UF and all that. Like, that'll be the best game, I think, of the season. All right, guys, the students here fired up about USF ball football. And there is Raphael Williams, the number one running back on this football team. He went out with a sprained ankle very early in the contest. Now look at this, the action's on the field, Bubba. You gotta watch this stuff <laughs> on the field. You can read about it tomorrow. He's reading Tom McEwen in the Tampa Tribune. You know what, I bet you he's got a history exam inside that and he's really studying. Talk about a study, uh, a quick study, how about Chad Barnhart with those first half numbers. Quickly over the middle, it is Cliff Dell on the reception. He had a big first half with the South Florida Bulls. Well, I think he's going to be an excellent uh, possession receiver. Uh, he's, he really has a good feel for the game. You can really see him read the defenses, find the soft spots, uh, sit down. Uh, they've got four excellent wide receivers. I've been impressed with all of them. Third down and five. The Bulls again with nearly 300 yards of offense in the first half. Five touchdowns. Barnhart has been very impressive. Again over the middle. This time he has Scott McCready. And that's very close to a first down. It is a first down for the South Florida Bulls. McCready was also very impressive in preseason scrimmages. Everybody's smiling tonight. Everybody's happy. That was a, a blitz and a hot read. Quarterback and receiver read it the same way, got on the same page. First down Bulls. The Bulls have done a good job of not only picking up the blitz, but throwing where the backer blitzed from and into that open area. Barnhart going deep. He's got Dell again at the 15, at the 10. Poise is the name of the game, and Barnhart really showed it there. He sat and sat and sat in the pocket. Great protection. I really think somebody broke her out. Look at him sit in the protection, sit in the pocket here. Excellent, excellent protection. Running him by the quarterback at the last second. Spots it. Bam. Dell took it away from the defender and then just cruised in on a 52-yard touchdown pass 
Dell tonight, five receptions, 149 yards, and the touchdown. The kick by Riggs is good, and Dell, one happy man, five catches, 149 yards, and things are looking gorgeous tonight in Tampa. The Bulls rolling over Kentucky Wesleyan. Big plays have been the name of the game so far for the South Florida Bulls, and the biggest right there with a 52-yard touchdown catch by this man. You don't think that was a tough route? Look at Cliff Dell. He's got nearly 150 yards in receptions. Five catches, 149 yards, the touchdown, and it looks like he's got a cramp down there. It's very warm on the field. Yeah, Hulahan Stadium is rocking tonight. Riggs tries to kick off, and there is a slight breeze down there that's just kind of swirling around the stadium, blows the uh, ball off the tee, so they'll try it again. You know, what I find very interesting, Doug, is we've got this big crowd here. Bulls are up 42 to 3. Very few people have left, and it's still uh, very loud here. It really is. Uh, this place has been rocking and loud since an hour before the game. That's how excited everybody's been. And the Panthers are not going to take a chance. They will leave it in the end zone, and they'll come out to the 20. Another look at the bomb. Well, look at the protection. Great job by Alcott, the center. Bell got beat, and he picked his guy up. Excellent throw. Boy, I'll tell you what. This has been some night for this wide receiver coach. Coach Hernandez, the wide receiver coach, he's got to be thrilled with their performance tonight. Four plays, 63 yards, only a minute 26. Dell with the 52-yard catch for the touchdown again he's had a huge game has the one score nearly 150 yards in receptions he's a transfer from Florida States from the 20 first and 10 for Kentucky Wesley J.D. Myers tries to hit the running back picked off by Mans touchdown South Florida Florida's first defensive score ever. It was nothing more than a th three deep zone. Ray Mans being the strong safety. Excellent read on his part. Three deep zone. Match zone. Jumped the back in the flat. Touchdown South Florida. Excellent, excellent anticipation by Ray Mans. Picture perfect. Good 21 yards for the touchdown. And the Bulls keep it rolling. Riggs. may be very tired tonight after all of his extra points. They have now lead it 49 to 3. One more look, coach. Excellent burst on the ball by Mans. You know, poor choice, but the you know the quarterback has been pressured all night. Yeah, nobody could have predicted or thought that we would see something like this tonight, Al. I mean, I, I really thought it would be a good football game right down to the fourth quarter. This has been a very impressive performance. Uh, I I'll tell you what's uh, very appropriate now since we're coming off a big defensive play. Let's go down to Mr. Defense and Leroy Selman of the South Florida Bulls. Brian. All right, we're here with Leroy Selman. Leroy. All right, we're here with the greatest football player ever to play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a member of the NFL Hall of Fame, Leroy Selman. And Leroy, you were in charge of raising the funds and rallying the community support. Did you ever imagine you'd get this kind of support? And it would, I know it wasn't easy, but it would come together like it did here this evening? Well, certainly none of us envisioned that it would come together like it has this evening. But I, So I think it's a great compliment to our community for the way they embrace this program. Community leaders got in behind it, and I know Frank Marsani and Peyton Adams got together with me, and we talked with a lot of folks that responded positively. And our season ticket holders, students, uh, alumni, community, that's why we're enjoying this night tonight. You're enjoying the night. Talk about the game. This is a tremendous. You're a great football player. Could you imagine a team would play this well this evening in the opener? Well, I didn't, you never know what to expect the first time out of the box. I'm so proud of these players, you know, because they, they've been committed and dedicated and prepared as best they could because they didn't know what to expect either. But they're right here and they're having a good time and, and they're good kids. I mean, they're good character and uh, we just want to help them to continue to grow and develop. A plan to get to 1A in about five years. What's next for you in getting there? Well, there's some components of the program 
uh, that we need to have in place before we can think about going to that next level. But I think with the uh, enthusiasm and the support that we've gotten thus far, if that trend continues, I think we can meet some of those goals that's necessary when we can start thinking about the next level. Smiling, Leroy Selman. Enjoy this evening. Well deserved. Congratulations on a job well done. Thanks. Jim Levitt not smiling with his special teams play. Kentucky Wesleyan with the 50-yard return, taking all the way down to nearly the 40-yard line of South Florida. Another the defense comes up with a big play there. Yeah, they did. Another breakdown on the uh, kickoff team, so they'll have something to work on this week. That's good. Second eight. Myers again under pressure, brought down immediately. You know, the, this is a classic example of speed and quickness on the football field. Every single play out there, you're seeing people get off blocks and, uh, and get to the quarterback, get to the receiver. Looks like they got a play here. Boom, down he goes. Uh, speed and quickness, you just can't defense it in football. John Johnson says, what down is it now? I'm not sure. He's in no man's land right now. Third down, by the way, that was Derek Basiglia with the big tackle there for the Bulls. Young guy out of City. That's Sleep fighting his way to the 25. Trans World Diversified Services is proud to be a part of the USF inaugural game and has underwritten a fireworks display, which will be held immediately upon the conclusion of tonight's inaugural game. Trans World has done so much for this university and so much for this game tonight being the sponsor of this game and of course has had a big night so far as the Bulls lead by a score of 49 to 3 with 940 left to go in the third period. You know and now we're starting to see a couple Five. backups in the game. First down. It's good to see some of the backups in the game here. Kids all these kids are going to have to play as the season progresses important for them to get experience. First and 10. It's good for a first down on the penalty. Another flag down. Myers nearly picked off again by the Bulls. And right through the hands of Brian Wilson. And he comes up limping. Brian Wilson has had a strong game. He has played the run very well, now leaving the game, but he's also had his opportunities as far as pass defense is concerned. Demetrius Woods back in. And it was a motion penalty on the Panthers. So that'll take it back five yards. Illegal motion on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Let's go to let's go down to the field and Brian Onks. Brian. All right, guys, we talked in the first half about Raphael Williams, the starting running back. He does have a sprained ankle. They're going to keep him out as a precautionary measure. He thinks he'll be able to go next week. He's over on the bench on crutches, though. Ankle taped up with his shoe off. Back upstairs. There he is, Raphael Williams scored the first touchdown for the South Florida Bulls. And here's Wilson going down. He has injured his knee. Didn't like that. It looked like he came down on a kind of funny. Not sure if it was his knee or his ankle. Hope it's not his knee. First down from the 30. John Johnson's team down 49-3. The blitz from USF. Once again, Demetrius Woods, and he has had some kind of ball game. Remember, he had the big hit at the end of the first half. He has got tremendous burst and explosiveness. Uh, he's a young guy from Miami. They have high expectations for this young guy. Woods, the sack leader in hey. preseason, and he's having a big night tonight. The, the guard was assigned to block him. He burst right by the guard, right to the back. No chance for the guard to get to him. Speed and quickness. Myers again in trouble, and the Bulls are all over him. That's Terrence Smiley on the sack. And Woods is in the middle of it once again. And Terrence Smiley, that's good to see him make some plays. He's a little guy in there, 5'10", 220, playing the interior. Strong, tough guy. 
Good leverage by the defensive lineman. Kevin Patrick's got to be happy with that. Eric Lane's got to be happy with that. Big hit. Boy, aggressive, aggressive football play. Just the way they want to play defense. Aggressive is the name of the game. Could it be these or these linemen, offensive linemen for Kentucky Wesleyan starting to feel the heat right now, simply getting tired? Well, they might be. They've had a long night, you know, and of course the scoreboard makes you get tired too. Third down and a country mile. Third down and 29. The reverse. We've got a flag down. There's a clip. This will be coming back. And this will bring it back even further. Really, the, the reverse was well played. Uh, the contained man had the eyes to see it and then let the speed get to the football plus the clip. Now they'll have to make a decision. Coach says decline. There's the clip. No question about that call. Terrence Smiley all over the field. He's got good quickness for an interior lineman. Block in the back on the offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat third down. Good effort by Rico Martinez as well. Swarming to the football. Now the Bulls decline the penalty. So it sets up fourth down, and he's the first guy to yell at the official on this. He says, forget that third down and long. I want fourth down. I want my offense back on the field. But this is a defensive coach. <laughs> you know, the players accuse him of drinking 14 Pepsi before every meeting. You know, when he comes in, he is fired up. He's got great enthusiasm. Well, Pepsi is a sponsor, so you can understand why. 7.15 left to go in the third, and the Bulls are rolling. Seven fifteen left to go in the third period, and the Bulls are rolling. How about forty-nine to three? Back to receive the punt will be Charlie Jackson. It's hard to see the number right now for the punter for Kentucky Wesleyan. Remember, Kilgore went out with an injury on the last punt. That is Bram, who punted in the first half. This is a low line drive. He was aiming for the corner. For the first time tonight, the Bulls are going to have bad field position, but there is a flag on the field. I think this is against Wesleyan. I think that they were uh, holding on the coverage here. We'll see. The punt was good for 33 yards, and it's a hold against Kentucky Wesleyan. A face mask. Look at that total yards. Wow. South Florida rolling 361 to 83. Here we are, 706 left to go in the third, and Kentucky Wesleyan has yet to break the century mark in yards. This this resembles a stampede by the Bulls <laughs> here up to this point. Face mask on the offense during the kick. Previous spot enforcement. Five yards. Repeat the down. That was Edmund Green uh, that had his face mask uh, held right there on that play on the coverage. Jim is coaching every minute. He never it never eases up. Now, Doug, uh, you're a former coach, and I know coaches think about every wrong thing that can go on. Are you surprised with all the good things that have gone on for this football team tonight in his very first uh, three periods? Well, I I'm amazed. It's a very, very well coached football team for as young as these kids are to come out and execute the way they have. I'm very, very impressed and certainly commend Coach and his staff. Coach Levitt and his staff have done a great job preparing these kids. Once again, Jackson back and he's just going to let it roll. And that turned into a, a better play. That's one of the top plays tonight for Kentucky Wesleyan. And then the block and there goes the flag. Late hit. That is Brett Hoy. Now he's a senior. He should know better than that. But then I can understand because he's taking a whip in here. And as a senior, he wants no part of this. Well, uh, Brent is another young guy from uh, the UP of Michigan, all the way down playing in Kentucky. Uh, that, that was a very poor decision on his part. Yeah, Whoa! Yeah. I'm surprised he hasn't been kicked out of the game. Uh, that's a frustration hit right there, Al. That's disappointing. And, uh, you know, Kentucky Wesleyan, uh, it's a shame. Uh, they've lost their poise a little bit. They've had a couple foolish penalties here. I know Coach Johnson will get them back focused and on track here. Oh, 
6.54 left to go in the third, and the Bulls will take advantage of the penalty. And for the first time tonight, we have a new quarterback in for the South Florida Bulls. It'll be Lance Hokey. This is a tremendous thing to get Lance Hokey some game experience here. And a great time to do it. He's got plenty of time to play, uh, get his poise, get his feet under him. Uh, show coach what he can do as well. They've got two good quarterbacks. I'll tell you, there won't be, I don't think, a huge letdown with this young guy at all. He's got real talent. He's played, transfer from Austin Pay was a starter there. Uh, he's a good football player. Now let me ask you, Doug, do you continue your offense, continue to throw the football, or up at 49-3 with 6.54 left to go, are you just going to take the air out of the football and run it out? Well, it, you know, that, that's their offense, and I think it would be unfair to Hokey to come in and just run the football, although they're running it pretty well right here. That is Clemens. Oh, man. And he will go all the way for the touchdown, South Florida. <laughs> Whoa. 79 <laughs> yards on the touchdown. Jermaine Clemens. You know, Jim has got to be thrilled because they have a tremendous amount of recruits here tonight and recruits watching this game throughout the state of Florida. 300 major college players a year leave this state. Uh, USF will now be in the hunt to get a lot of those great kids that go to Big Ten and every place else. Another toss. Again, here's Otis Dixon out leading again. Good job by the wideout downfield. Excellent job running the football by Jermaine Clemens. He's been very impressive. And the kick is good by Riggs. We should also mention a fine block there by Cedric Bell to get outside and make a big block. Jermaine Clemens, pull that shoot. He may never stop. 56 3 <laughs> Bulls. The man of the hour, Jermaine Clemens. Again, he came in as the second team running back for the South Florida Bulls. He has nine carries, 132 yards, three rushing touchdowns, and a touchdown reception. Not bad, huh? That guy's going to be doing push-ups. He may get a hernia. He's doing so many push-ups. One of the few penalties tonight for the South Florida Bulls, out of bounds on the kickoff. Let's take one more look at this 80-yard touchdown run, Doug. Yeah, great cutback right here. Good block by Dixon. Excellent block by Cedric Bell. You're right. Heck of a job downfield. Good block uh, by Johnson. Away he goes off to the race. Look at the speed here catching up. Man, I'll tell you what. Nobody could have predicted this. And Kentucky Wesleyan has played a lot of 1AA teams in the last couple years. But, the, you know, this nobody could have predicted this. Now the coach is saying this is the way I drew this up. 80-yard drive, one play, 18 seconds. Amazing. From the 35, first and 10 for Kentucky Wesleyan. They have only 83 yards in offense tonight compared to 441 for the South Florida Bulls. The pitch at Sleet. And he is brought down immediately. Big defensive play by the Bulls. Let's go down to the field and Brian Ons. All right, guys. Well, Jim Levitt from Dixie Highlands High School, Glenn Davis, the cornerback and impact player this evening. I've got the current coach at Dixie Highlands High School, Todd Wilson. And Todd, talk about Glenn's performance. It's been outstanding this evening. Oh, I'm, I'm extremely proud of him. It's awful nice to see one of your kids go out there. And since I've been a head coach, that's the first kid I've got to see on a college field. And obviously, it's a special night out here for everybody. And um, I thought Glenn played tremendous. First interception in the history of USF. One of the things that was funny was when uh, Coach Levitt was recruiting him, he kept saying, I think he's a safety. I don't think he's quite quick enough to play cornerback. And I told him, I said, you know, I'm not right on very many things in my whole life, but I said, he can play corner. I just know he can. And I said, I've been wrong so many times, but I tell you what, he showed us real proud tonight, and I, I just got a chance to say hi to him. I, I'm proud as can be of the kid. Good to see Coach Levitt back in the area. Oh, absolutely. He and uh, Rick Kravitz, who's really the brains behind the whole thing, basically. <laughs> um, it's nice to see both of them and uh, the whole staff. And I, it's just a special night for Tampa. We, it's funny because we got to talk last night after a game and um, I was so tired I didn't think I wanted to even come to this. I'm so glad I came because the kids are playing real well and it's just a really good night for Tampa in general. 56 right. points may never have been scored here before. Ty Wilson, thanks a lot. Continue success it. at Dixie Highlands. Back upstairs, gentlemen. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, he's going to make a lot of friends here. First of all, now he says Kravitz is running the place, and now he says 56 points and never have been scored in this stadium before. <laughs> well, he's getting some shots in. Well, he got a couple of good ones in right there. <laughs> it's his buddy from Dixie Highlands, right? <laughs> of course, Rick Kravitz is from uh, Dixie, too. Fourth down. Kentucky Wesleyan will have to punt again. 
once again, it's Charlie Jackson. John Johnson can just kind of sit back and watch. He knows his team has been outclassed physically tonight by a very young team, and the Bulls will call a timeout. timeout. They did not have the proper people on the field for special teams. So the Bulls call a timeout with 4.32 left to go in the third, leading 56-3. Great night for USF. South Florida Bulls rolling in their very first game, 56 to 3. Next week, though, reality time. They take on the Citadel up in South Carolina on the road. This is a tough place to play, and this will be a football team that will see this result, and I think they'll have their attention. Well, they certainly got the Citadel's attention, no question about that. Of course, that game will be on. Uh, next Saturday night, the TV will be up there, and we look forward to, to going to Charleston. I hear it's a great place to see a football game, and the Citadel can be a very aggressive football team and uh, has all the makings for an excellent matchup next Saturday night right here on 44 in Sports Channel Florida. Jackson back to receive the punt. Another four kick, very low. Jackson loses it, pulls it back in, and the Bulls keep the football. That's frustrating because he had an opportunity there to gain some yards, and he simply it looks like he took his eye off the football. Just about what you'd expect though, in an open game like this with a young team. Uh, certainly, they have a tremendous amount of work to do on their special teams next week, and uh, Jim does not want to see that, and I'll guarantee you he'll have something to talk about. <laughs> you know, Betty Castor, the president at USF, has said that this game has sparked more interest at the University of South Florida than anything in its 41-year history. How about that for the president? Yeah, that is some kind of statement, and for good reason. And you look at the 46,000 strong here. This is uh, one of the largest universities in the South. They have a flag down. You know, and Paul Griffin told me that since they initiated the football program, that their freshman applications has jumped every year for three years in a row since they did that. So it does have an impact. The 13th largest university, the five-yard penalty, still first down. Offside penalties, yep. first and five from midfield. And I think another thing, uh, you know, for South Florida, John Johnson very frustrated with his team. South Florida, a very young team, yet they have not had a lot of penalties to them. Oh, that's the amazing thing. They're very well prepared. A couple of foolish penalties, uh, problems in the kicking game. Those can all be corrected. Hokey on the option. Keeps it himself. And he has some green in front of him. He takes it down to the 30-yard line, and there's another flag down. Well, he, he really showed some quickness there. And, uh, and the option is just one more weapon in the arsenal. Let's take a look at it here. Just a straight sprint option. Cuts it up, shows a little burst here. Got to tuck, there we go. Tuck the ball away. Good job, Lance. North and south runner showed some toughness. Yeah, he's a good player, too. They have good depth at the quarterback position. And when Jim started this program, that was a priority. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat first down. One of the few penalties tonight for the South Florida Bulls. That's only their fourth penalty for 39 yards. Tickets are still available for the upcoming South Florida football games by calling the athletic ticket office at 974-2125. From the 48, first down once again after the holding penalty. The blitz. And the Bulls beat it nearly. The running back, excuse me, the fullback, Dixon, very close to a first down. And we talked, of course, about tickets for the football team. Seth Greenberg has had one of the best recruiting classes in the country when it comes to college basketball. You can also get tickets for the Basket Bulls by calling 974. 2-1-2-5. Leaving the field, that is Brian McNulty, one of the offensive linemen. He's going, leaving the field under his own power. Plenty of fans here. Let's go down to Brian. 
All right, guys, well, we have been in the student section. Now we're with some alumni. We've got Glenn Sudbury here, born and raised in Tampa, graduate in 1969. Talk about the excitement of USF Bulls football. This is very, very exciting. I've waited this whole life. When I was in South Florida in the early years, we didn't have any football. They didn't let, let us play football, but now look at it. This is fantastic. Karen Hur is a graduate in 1984. Talk about your feelings in this football team. Well, I can't imagine we would be this good. We Once again, the Bulls dial one for long distance. They score the touchdown. And the Bulls are making it look easy, even with seven uh, second teamers tonight. This is a counter trap, bringing the backside guard. Good north, look at the high knees. Good north and south running. Uh, you know, I, I don't know much about this young man, but obviously he has some talent too. You don't want to slow down, son. When you got him in the end zone, don't slow down and give him a chance to tackle you. And the point after is good. So the Bulls now lead 63 to 3. Let's go back to Brian. What did they think of that touchdown, Brian? All right, Karen Hur here. Karen, what'd you think of that play? This has been an exciting evening up and down the field for the offensive unit. It's just so exciting. I can't believe it. We're thrilled. Lou Villarosa Jr., a graduate in 1974. Lou, did you think it would be like this this evening? It's it's like a dream, really. It's really a dream. It's something that everybody's been waiting for for, for 30 years, you know. And, and it's perfect. What else can you say? All, right, all three of you now, do you think this is here to stay? This team's going to be here for a long yes. time? Yes. What was that? Yes. Team's going to be here for a long time? Oh, forever. Forever. All right, the alumni behind the team back upstairs. Boy, it's amazing how you feel when you're up 63 to 3, <laughs> right, Coach? Well, I tell you what, it, it always makes people a little bit happier. You know, when it goes the other way, then they're not quite as uh, <laughs> happy. I'll guarantee you that. Ryan Searcy with the 47 yard touchdown run again. Everyone's still staying here at the stadium. They're not going to miss a minute of this. And I'll tell you what, he, he, no, I, I've, uh, Dan Shoemaker said he's calling his wife. I'm wondering if he's calling to place a bet on the Bulls for next week. You think so? <laughs> no, no, absolutely no gambling in NCAA football. He's making his travel arrangements. That's what he, he wants to go up to the Citadel next week. <laughs> You know, 155,000 USF alumni, and I'll tell you what, uh, they're all just thrilled to have some fun out here tonight. Of course, they're not all here, but a bunch of them are. Listen to this, Doug. The attendance tonight, 49,212. Wow. Again, this is Division I AA football. This has to be one of the largest crowds in Division I AA football history. Doug. Incredible. And I'll tell you what, all these people are a part of history, and they deserve a special congratulations for being a part of this, because these kids are playing their hearts out, and they're enjoying every single minute of it. You know, and you don't think this kid's parents are very proud at this moment? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, football fans are something, aren't they? They're saying, now, Junior called for money, and I paid for makeup? My goodness. I'll tell you what, Jim Levitt, I, I don't I don't think I don't think he uh, he's having as much fun as some of these other people here. He, he, he ought to enjoy this. He's up 63 to three. You know what? <laughs> I'm a coach, but I understand. <laughs> but you know, we are not normal people. You understand that sleep with no running room and he is hammered. You know, on that attendance, 49,000, just to give you some perspective, last year, the one double A championship game, you know, 31,000. My goodness. And here we are, the opening game of this program, 49,000. That's incredible. Great student turnout, which is always a key thing. And the community has pointed up so much at a time when they've got the Lightning asking, uh, asking them for uh, season tickets and the Devil Rays and the Bucks. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what uh, Raphael Williams may have the bad ankle, but he's still able uh, to dance. Don't hurt your ankle, Raphael. <laughs> Settle down. He's, still ha he's having more fun than Levitt. Interference penalty. It appears on the Bulls. Now, Jim doesn't like those mistakes, and he won't like this one either. But you know what? As a coach, you got to have something to correct next week. So now he's got a lot of things he can work on. Let's take a look at this uh, penalty. Well, well, that, that's pretty picky. You know, as a former secondary coach. First down. 
Bernard Brown, the call is on him. John Johnson's team is finally getting closer, kind of inching closer to the 40-yard line. By the way, we talked about the defense tonight. How about Sean Hay? Six tackles. He's got two sacks tonight. Yeah, Sean has been, I think, uh, very, very impressive up front. I think Brett Avery's had a great night as well. And, uh, you know, I was a little bit concerned with their size up front, but again, it just shows quickness, solves a lot of problems. Wes Cole, the new quarterback for Kentucky Wesleyan. And that is short. Kind of short hop is wide receiver. Looking for Corey Jordan, who had a long kickoff return earlier tonight. I see that we got Mike Sandy in the game now at right corner. Another yeah, you transfer like him. from Rutgers. Yeah, yeah I, you I know think he'll be a good well. player here. He's just, uh, you know, he's not in great shape. He's uh, He just got cleared to play. I think he's only had about a week of practice, but I think he'll be a solid player for him. But their corners have been impressive tonight. Second and 10 from the 40. The Bulls are up 63 to 3, 120 left to go in the third. Cole. Finds his receiver. That is Jamie and Ferguson on the catch. You know, and I, I've been watching their front, and, uh, and Truda, just like Rick Kravitz told me, they really have stunned it on almost every play up front. And, you know, that gets, uh, that wears thin a little bit uh, for Kentucky Wesleyan. Uh, you, you have to concentrate all night to pick up those stunts, and I think it's a tremendous advantage for the Bulls to be able to do that. West Cole is only a freshman. Kind of thrown into the fire here, taking on a hot Bulls defense right now. Third down, third and four for Kentucky Wesleyan. Ball on the ground. And the Bulls say they have the football, and so does the official. Yet another turnover for Kentucky Wesleyan. And how about this defense that is forced turnover time and time again tonight for the South Florida Bulls. Well, it's been a great night for them. I feel sad for uh, Kentucky Wesley. You know, when it seems to go bad, it just keeps going that way. Let's see what uh, Hokey can do with this team on this drive. Steve Hatley with the fumble recovery, and Hokey again with great field position at the 48s. 106 left to go in the third. 63 to three Bulls. The draw. Excellent spin. Once again, that's Brian Searcy who had the touchdown only a few moments ago. Calvin McGee's got a staple of backs over there, I'll tell you. That's it with the, the, the uh, offensive line is really still coming off the really coming off the football. They really are. Great job by Bell. Good hole up front. I think Kentucky Wesleyan is getting tired on defense. Now you can see it now. I really think that's being a factor. That's a gain of seven on the play. Second down and three. Cersei again. Beautiful tackle in the backfield. That might have been a loss. Brent Hoy, who earlier was called for that personal foul on the other side of the field. Uh, you know what? Uh, Brian missed the cut there. He had a cut on the backside, and he ran uh, right into the stump. Uh, tough situation. I think Kentucky's getting a little bit tired. That is the end of the third period. The South Florida Bulls very much in control. 63 to 3 over the Panthers. We're ready for the fourth quarter here at the Trans World inaugural football game for the South Florida Bulls. I'll tell you what, if you're just tuning in, you have missed some incredible big plays. 63 to 3, South Florida leading the way here over Kentucky Wesleyan in their very first football game. Hokey to the air. Gets hit. Still finds his receiver. Beautiful pass. Great route. Nice catch. And with the honors on the catch for the South Florida Bulls is Corey Porter. That's his first catch as a bull. Watch Hokey stay in the pocket here. He's going to get nailed just as he delivers this ball, but he hangs in there and makes a very, very good throw on the outcut. Perfect throw. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, that's a great thing to see as a football coach to have your second quarterback come in and play like this. Good job of getting the feet down inbounds. Terrific execution. 
from the 29 is good for a first down. Could the Bulls hit the 70 mark in their debut? Cersei again already has one touchdown. Fights his way near the 20 yard line. You know, he, he has a totally different running style than the other two backs. Uh, he's more of a north and south power runner. Puts his shoulders down and goes. This looks like an injury to Kentucky Wesleyan. Tell you what, let's go down to the field. Brian Ox has Seth Greenberg, the USF basketball coach. And Brian, you got to ask Greenberg if his offense can keep in, keep up with this South Florida offense. Well, it's going to be tough, but he's got a great recruiting class coming. That's why we do have Seth Greenberg with his daughter, Jackie. And Seth Alkeck said, can your outfit keep up with this football team here? I don't know if we can get 40, uh, 63 points in the first three quarters of the game, but uh, this has been an absolutely magnificent day for South Florida. I mean, the atmosphere here is second to none. And, you know, Paul and Leroy and Jim and this community and the university, this is just a great boost for our university. And, it's electric in this place. How important is it for a big time basketball program like you have to have a big time football program to complement it? I think it works hand in hand. What a great start to the school year. I mean, just to create this type of enthusiasm to have South Florida on the front page of the sports section every single day and uh, just to get people excited about this university and take pride in the university. I saw more people wearing green and gold today than I've seen since I've been here in the past year. So this is just very exciting for the whole university. and. Uh, what a great way to start the season. You had a super recruiting class this year. Talk about your program and what you expect this year. Well, you know, we're excited about the future. We signed five, we think, outstanding high school players, three of maybe the best players in the state of Florida. Uh, we have a transfer from the University of Virginia, Scott Johnson, a 6'10 player who can make shots. And we signed an outstanding junior college player uh, from Crawfordville Junior College, but another Florida athlete. You know, we think that's the nucleus for, for an exciting future. We return Brian Lamb, obviously a senior, who gives us great leadership. And, uh, you know, we think the future is very bright. It's going to take some time. We're going to play some young players, but uh, you know, they better grow pretty quick because when you're playing the Florida States and the, the Cincinnati's and the Marquette's and the Louisville's, you got to be ready to, you know, get it, get it going. Coach, good luck this year. Thank you very much. All right, Al, we'll look forward to his program tipping off the November 7th with their first exhibition game. South Florida Bulls basketball playing that exciting Conference USA schedule. Speaking of exciting, the Bulls at the one, knocking out the door once again. The pitch to Cersei. Fights his way in. This is truly amazing, truly amazing. I've never in my wildest dreams expected this young team to come out and execute like this tonight. Now, well, this has uh, really been fun to see. And I know the alumni are happy, the kids are happy. It just bodes so well for the future of this program. Very early in the final period, Riggs going for his 10th point after and the 70 point mark. And the kick is good. The South Florida Bulls hit the 70 point mark with 1329 left to go in the contest. Brian Searcy with the touchdown run and the Bulls lead it 70 to three. Well, the pom poms, do you think they're getting tired here at the University of South Florida? The Bulls. 70 to 3. Well, the Florida Gators beat Central Michigan tonight, 82 to 6. So maybe the Bulls can give that score a run. Well, I'll tell you what, those uh, Central Michigan and Kentucky Wesleyan had a tough trip down here in Florida. Church. Church Hill on the return. Make that church well. Let's take a look at the score again. Cersei again, a toss left. Good block by the fullback. Tight end has got him tied up pretty good. Good eye, nose for the end zone, up and over and in. You know who deserves the Purple Heart tonight? That is our videotape editor. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's getting tired. He's going to be exhausted from finding all these replays tonight. Right. Ten touchdowns tonight for the Bulls. Then a bunch of highlights. Scott Dykes gets a couple of yards. And I'm sure if you are John Johnson right now, what you're looking to do, you're also looking to take the air out of the football. Get on the bus back home to Kentucky Wesley. That's right. Get the, get the motor cranked up on the bus, run the football, let's go home. <laughs> let's get out of here. 
great opportunity for some of the uh, kids uh, that have not played for USF to get some experience because they will be needed as the season progresses. Second and long. Fumble off once again, and the Bulls pounce on it. When it goes bad, it goes bad. And a personal foul as well. Quincy Stratford getting very, very frustrated through some punches. That'll be a penalty. And Sean Hay has done it all tonight for the South Florida Bulls. He's had a couple of sacks, also recovers a fumble now. Sean Hay has had a big night. Excellent hit right there, Sean Hay, good recovery. When you run to the football, good things happen. Whoa, <laughs> that, you yeah. can see the punch. Good call. South Florida, we have a dead ball, personal, and an ejection. A good call by the official. That is Stratford, who is leaving. He was kicked out of the ball game. You know the coach that I'm most impressed with tonight, uh, Eric Wolfer, the line coach at USF. He's a tough, hard-nosed, young line coach, outstanding coach, a four-year starter at Kansas State, and, and he really has done a great job with this young offensive line to get them to be prepared. And John is definitely not having a good time tonight. I'll tell you what, what he may do, he, will, he may take some of the $20,000 that the Bulls gave Kentucky Wesleyan, and he's going to fly by himself home. Everybody else is going to get on the bus, I think. That's going to be a long bus ride home. Well, his team has just been totally uh, overmatched tonight, no question about it. Uh, I knew they had better athletes, but I thought uh, that USF would make more mistakes, and they certainly have. They've executed very well, except for the special team. Lance Hokey, once again the quarterback. At the 19. A new running back for the Bulls. That is Derek Radford. Excuse me, Derek Ricard. Excuse me, Derek, uh, Derek Rackard. This is terrific for all these kids to get an opportunity to play. You know, they've been working so hard for so long, have not had a game to look forward to. Some of these kids have been practicing for a year and a half and haven't played a game. That's tough. Yeah, a lot of these kids have never played before a crowd of any more than two or 3,000 people. Now to come out, including Kentucky Wesleyan, I think their largest crowd was 9,000 last year, Western Kentucky. They've had a play tonight before some 49,000 here at the stadium. Record again, he fights his way to the 10. Calvin McGee, the running back, he's got another north and south runner. I like that. Well, Searcy uh, left with a couple of touchdowns and 71 yards on six carries. Now, remember wow. what Clemens did. Remember <laughs> that Williams started the game. He scored a touchdown on the opening drive. A lot of talent on the South Florida Bulls, but again, next week they go to the Citadel to take on a team in their class. Should be very interesting to see how it comes out next week. Quick pass. Kentucky Wesleyan on it quickly. Coy Porter, uh, uh, Corey Porter on the reception, and Chad Murphy coming up to hit him immediately, and that sets up fourth down. Going to get a look at a field goal here. Hokey's the holder. Excuse me, I think that's Glenn Gaunt, the freshman. You don't think people are getting bored with these 70 points, do you? Oh, no. there we go. No way. No, no way. No, no way. They're loving every... Hey, they still haven't left. And the kick is good. Got a 27-yard field goal for Riggs. So he has 10 extra points and the 27-yard field goal. The Bulls. Leading by 70. <laughs> 73 to 3 in the first ever football game for the South Florida Bulls. Still plenty of time left. Riggs to kick off, just kicked a 27 yard field goal. Sleep on the return for Kentucky Wesleyan. He nailed at the 20 yard line, flagged down. <laughs> Rico Martinez among those on the hit on special teams for the South Florida Bulls. Yeah. 
It's a call against uh, Kentucky Wesley, and uh, the penalties have been fairly. Uh, Block in the back, on the run back, by the receiving team. 10 yards, first down. Now let's make sure they do all 73. <laughs> Brian Onx is down there counting. He may need a calculator before the evening's over. And then the girls are cheering them on. I'll tell you what, I'd have a cheer for them. Let's say cheer this. From the 11. Get West Cole, the quarterback for Kentucky Wesley. He's in trouble. Throws a dangerous pass that is nearly picked off, but it turns into a good gain for Kentucky Wesleyan. Let's go down to Brian. All right, guys, we have Nick Haddon, Shane Perrin, and Benjamin flying. These might be the most exhausted guys in the stadium. 73 push-ups. I just did 70. You guys are going to be in great shape. Damn skippy. <laughs> it's a lot harder than it looks. Remember that. You got to try to believe it. That's all. All right, the football cheerleader is working hard this evening back upstairs. Well, they may deserve a scholarship for that. I'll tell you what, remember the 73 push-ups after doing 60-some and then 50-some and 40-some. <laughs> you know, they are the only people in the stadium that don't want to see another touchdown other than Kentucky Wesley. <laughs> That's been a long night. I'm glad to see Jim. He's got uh, his third middle backer in there, Anthony Williams, a 220-pound freshman, getting a lot of these young kids an opportunity to play. Uh, you know, they practice hard, but they need to get out here and have some fun and progress as football players. Third and one from the 20. The Bulls are right there. It's uh, right there. It's going to be very, very close to the first down. I don't think they got it. I'm going to have to see a measurement. Oh, first down. One of the few first downs tonight for Kentucky Wesley. This is a Division I, or excuse me, a Division II football team that a lot of people say, with the size school it is, maybe should be a Division III team because they only have 800 kids in the entire school. Well, they, you know, they have 80 football players and 800 kids. One of eight students is a football player. All right, let's take a look now at the ESPN Plus update. Marshall with the big win over Army. I understand Randy Moss had a couple of touchdowns, including a 90-yarder for Marshall. Penn State, number one in one poll. The Gators are number one in another. Look at that, Gators. 82-6 over Central Michigan. You don't think that Steve Spurrier wanted to roll things up, not happy with his offense one a week ago. Cole throws it away. Completion on the sidelines. Unfortunately, it won't count. Well, that was a, the third string offensive guard. I don't think they'll count that. The Washington Huskies off and rolling Great start over BYU. The That's a big win for the Huskies. North Carolina, a team that many people believe will give Florida State a run in the ACC, beating Indiana. I don't know if they're number one, but they're definitely number one tonight. South Florida Bulls with 73 points. It's very first football game. I'll tell you what, you take a look at the scores of the University of Florida and Miami and Florida State in their fir very first games. Nowhere near 73 points. Of course, football is a different game back then. Yeah. That's exactly the... the if this really is a tribute to the high school football here in the state of Florida. Uh, you know, everybody recruits here in Florida. Everybody. There's a reason for it. There's a lot of great football players, great high school programs, great speed throughout the state. And really, uh, this is what is going to give this program, USF, a chance to really go. With all these, say, 300 players coming out of here, you know, Florida, Florida State, Miami, they can only take about 60 of those 300 out. That leaves a lot of great players out there, and a lot of them would prefer to stay home. The fumbled snap. Brent goes down, and he's tackled inside the 10-yard line, so the Bulls will get a chance to hit the 80-point mark. Well, the wheels have really come off for Kentucky Wesleyan. They just can't seem to really do anything right now. Get the bus started up. <laughs> Tough night for them. I feel bad for them. I really do. 
And the main thing, if you're John Johnson right now, you don't want to get anybody hurt to really hurt you any more, even more during their remaining games this season. Right, that was Ryan Brem, their corner. It was a high snap, but really it could have been handled. And that was another foolish, foolish a personal foul. You're seeing a lot of frustration penalties now on the Kentucky Wesley. And Dead ball. Personal foul, late hit. 15 yards, first down. John Johnson's team. Again, having trouble with turnovers, and they've given the Bulls excellent field position throughout the evening. From the 17, first down. Searcy back in the lineup for the South Florida Bulls. Excuse me, that is record. Let's go down to the field and Brian Ongst. Brian. All right, gentlemen, I'm here with Hiram Green, assistant athletic director in charge of basketball operations. And Hiram, uh, you're an ex-Bull basketball great here. Talk about the football program. This is unbelievable this evening. It is absolutely unbelievable. You know, and I've been here for so long, uh, since 1978, and we've always heard that football was going to come, and it's been over and over, and now it's here. And we we're really excited about it. The crowd's been great, and the, just the excitement of people around town today has been ex extraordinary. A lot of excitement also surrounding the Bull basketball program. Talk about the development of that program. Of course, Greenberg is. We're really looking forward for a great year this year. We had a great recruiting year. In fact, um, by some rec recruiting service, we have the top 25 recruiting class in the country and uh, some really good freshmen coming in. And we're looking forward for an exciting year. Conference USA is one of the best conferences in the country, and uh, we're bringing in some great schools to play. Talk about the affiliation with Conference USA. What did that mean to the program? It means that everything because, uh, you know, one of the things that happened is we're bringing the best schools here to play against. And uh, so we have, as athletic department, we want quality. We're bringing the best here, and we want people to come out and support us because, you know, the basketball program is uh, on the way up. Gentlemen, Hiram Green, an outstanding basketball player, still can lace up the sneakers and play with the guys back upstairs. That is Rockard over the 15-yard line, close to a first down on third down, but it looks like he's a little bit short. Now, we talked about Marshall, who moved up to Division I. Here's another team, Boise State, that moved up to Division I. And I tell you what, they used to be in the big sky, but they gave Wisconsin a big scare. They, they certainly did. And, you know, I'm a former big sky coach, which is probably the other premier 1AA conference along with the Southern Conference, and that's not shocking to me. Boise State has always had an outstanding program. You used to be a coach at Montana State. You know that area very well. Well, I sure do. In 1AA football, uh, you know, there's a lot of great teams in 1AA. You know, Western Kentucky, the Citadel, Georgia Southern. Of course, Marshall just moved up. Boise State just moved up. Uh, Idaho uh, has just moved up, and they've always had a great program, and USF it's not going to take them too long to catch up to those programs. I really believe that. Derek Rackard, very close to the 10-yard line. Good enough for the first down. Another, another good impressive running back in Calvin McGee's stable. He's got four backs now that have, I've really been impressed with tonight. Now the Bulls can get a first down close to the goal line. Rackard. Cuts it inside to the five. Good football player. Good football player. You know, to, to start the season, uh, USF in the rankings was ranked 212th out of all the Division I schools. Now, I'll tell you what, I think they're going to move up a little bit this week. And, uh, and I, you know, deservedly so. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a different ball game next week playing the Citadel, a very, very established, tough 1AA program on the road, tough place to play, young football team. They'll have their work cut out for them. Second down and five. That's McCready in motion. Rackard again. Gets around the corner. Inside for the touchdown, South Florida. You know, you, you can't put the kids on the field now and say don't score and don't play football. I mean, that, that's, that's more embarrassing to the other team. So, you know, they've got to go out and play. Now, they're not trying to run the score up. I mean, that's their fifth string tailback in there. Uh, they're running the football. They're trying to, to really get the game over with. But you can't tell the kids not to play.
player for Kentucky Wesleyan down. You know who that trainer is for Kentucky Wesleyan? Her name is Liam, Liam Stockton. That is John Stockton's sister. The guard out in Utah, that's his sister. And she just got back two days ago. She was the trainer for the WNBA team out there, the Utah Stars. Right now, she's working on Andrew Thacker, defensive lineman. Once again, you're still seeing an awful lot of green and gold in the stands, and for the most part, people are sticking around. That's right, there are fireworks tonight. Franz World has a big fireworks show going on tonight after the game. Actually, I, I, I'd say that we've seen the fireworks already we've, tonight. We've seen a bunch of them. I don't know how they top this. You know, it was really neat coming to the stadium today. All the cars with the green and gold flags on them, the USF Bulls flags on the cars, it was terrific. These people are having a great time. I'll tell you what, good for them. It's been a long time coming. Ryan Reardon in to attempt the point after. He is going for the 80 point mark. There's Leanne. Who for would, the South Florida Bulls. Who would have ever guessed? Certainly not me. Their very first football game. 351 left to go in the contest. The Bulls with the big win. That score is not a mistake. The South Florida Bulls and their collegiate football debut. Leading Kentucky Western by a score of 80 to 3. And again, everybody's still sticking around. They've got fireworks after the game and plenty of fireworks during the game. Sleet on the return for Kentucky Wesleyan. Oh, you are talking the hit of the night. That is Chris Hill, a backup fullback. And he makes his impression into this contest. Tonight's game has been brought to you by GTE the official telecommunications consultant to the NCAA. By the new Dodge, see the friendly Dodge dealer near you. By the Tampa Tribune, making a difference in our community. And by Transworld Diversified Services, transforming companies and careers. We've had a transformation tonight here at Tampa Stadium, where the South Florida Bulls are laying a licking on Kentucky Wesleyan. New quarterback in now for the Panthers as he gets nailed from behind. That is C.J. Murray. That's another sack for the Bulls tonight. And again, the swarming, aggressive, attack-style defense is really something. What am I supposed to do? These girls are having a ball tonight, I guarantee you. They should go up to the Citadel next week, I think. I think they should. Tell you what, how about if we just create, we just take all 46,000 or 49,000 fans, give them tickets for next week, and see how they do next week. Okay. And Charleston's a great place to visit, believe me. Murray in trouble again, gets it away in time. Here comes a flag. Yeah, that's got to be a flag. I mean, <laughs> there was not a white jersey <laughs> within about 25 yards. That has to be a flag. Derek Basiglio was the man applying the pressure on Miriam. Derek Siglio has played a bunch tonight. He's played very, very well. Young guy from Plant City High School. You know that he was an Olympic torchbearer in 96 and went to the Olympics. Dad's a doctor up there in Plant City, and he's a, a fine young player in this program, one of many that they have. He'll be a good Five yard penalty, loss of down. Once again, in the shadow of its goal post. Second down and 27 for Kentucky Wesleyan. 2.52 left to go in the contest. The draw. Fools nobody. That 
was Chris Hamilton on the run. And here's a look at our GTE long distance play of the game. Jermaine Clements came off the bench to have an incredible game tonight for the South Florida Bulls. Excellent blocking. He turns the corner and he turns it on. 80 yards for the touchdown, our GTE long distance play of the game. Got a lot of long plays to choose from, too, didn't I'll we? tell you. Tough choice. The punt. Jackson goes down. Feet went out from under him. And he may be hurt. There's a look at Clemens, our GTE long distance play of the game winner. So the Bulls will get the football again now with 203 left to go in the contest. And a new quarterback for the South Florida Bulls, Glenn Gaunt. You talked about him earlier, Doug. He's a freshman getting a chance to get some playing time. Yeah, he's a true freshman from Sarasota Booker High School. Good size. Once again, the Bulls are on the run. Good hole there. The running back is Keith Williams. Actually, he's a fullback, so the big guy gets rumbling. I, I really think they've been through all their halfbacks and they're, they're putting their fullbacks in the halfback spot now. <laughs> and you know, it's amazing. All of their halfbacks did very well. Can you imagine this? 562 yards, nearly 300 yards on the ground. This was a football team. They expected to come out here and have a 65-35 split between the pass and the run. How about that for balance? I mean, <laughs> as a coach, you just love that. You just love to see that balance. From the 30, second down and one. Clock winding down. Fumble. One of the few fumbles tonight for the South Florida Bulls. And Kentucky Wesleyan jumps on it with 1.15 left to go in the game. That is Sean Carroll on the recovery. Well, Coach Levitt again will have some corrections to make this week. He's looking, he's searching for things right now, believe me. But, uh, you know, coaches, you know how they are. They'll always find something wrong. Well, again, remember talking to him at halftime, he had 35 points, leading 35 to 3, and he was unhappy with the one special team he, play. He really was. <laughs> he was seriously unhappy. From the 29 for Kentucky Wesleyan. 1.15 left to go. The Bulls leading 80 to 3. The pitch, and the Bulls are right there. They sniff it out. Jason Butler leading a trio of Bulls into the backfield. That's Anthony a, Williams also there. That's a breakdown for Wesleyan. Uh, they ran a toss sweep and they had nobody to block the strong safety. So he was it was a three deep look and the strong safety was there unblocked. Football is a game of mistakes and that certainly was a major one there. Probably for the offensive guard or the fullback one of them. Kentucky Wesleyan has 85 yards of offense. They've been penalized 103. And again, this was a team that came in with experience. The pass by Miriam. Going deep. Nearly intercepted by the Bulls. j Mize, who's played a fine game tonight, knocks it down. He has, and that's another of them. Two safeties from East Lake High School. Jay is the other one. 27 seconds remaining in the contest. And the Bulls. may not beat the score of the Florida Gators, but they may beat the point spread. The Gators winning 82 to six, and the Bulls leading 80 to three. Third down and long. Miriam. Al, it's just hard to imagine a better coming out party for the University of South Florida. And our player of the game, I'll tell you what, there are a lot of choices here, but this is the guy that really made the big plays early, our Pepsi. Generation next player of the game, Chad Barnhart. How about that for his start? 14 to 28, 50%, that's what you want. 255 yards and basically one half of football and two touchdowns. Well, I think it wasn't only his performance, uh, but he really settles down this whole young offensive football team with his great poise and leadership, and he's very much under control. And that was a very impressive e evening for him. Clock winding down. 
13 seconds left to go in the contest. That'll set up fourth down. You know, and Jim, in no way, uh, ran up the score tonight on Kentucky Western. I mean, they've been running the football. They've played, I think, just about oh, every player this. that they uh, can. I see one Gatorade. One Gatorade. Look out. Bucket. Look I'll out. <laughs> Looks like they got one of the managers. Uh, you got to have some fun playing football. Apparently, they did get Jim Levitt. They're Earlier. just going to practice their kill the clock play. This is first down for the Bulls, and they're just going to let it wind down. The clock winding down on the opening game for that man's program here at the University of South Florida. The clock goes off, and the cheering continues for the South Florida Bulls. Fireworks going off. When we come back, we'll talk to the winning coach, Jim Levin. His Bulls win their opener, 80 to 30. Jim Levitt and coach, you said before the game you wanted to see your team play before you'd say what kind of team you have. What kind of a team do you think you have now after the first Well, game? I, you know, I, it's too early to tell. Honestly, I don't mean to, mean to avoid a question, but uh, Citadel is, is going to be a, a very strong team next week, and we're not going to know how good we really are for about three or four weeks. This is a very difficult situation for Kentucky Weston to come into, and we've been geared up for this quite a while, and I, you know, it, it's very difficult. So I, I'll wait to answer that question after after two or three weeks. But you have to be pleased with the poise that the young team played with this evening for the most part. Well, they they did some pretty good things. You know, I, I was so disappointed in our kicking game, but but I you know I was happy overall. I had you know it's it's hard. We, we, we'll see as we go. Good luck next week against right, Siddle. Congratulations on a great opener. Back upstairs to Allen Doug. Fireworks outside the stadium. There were fireworks inside the stadium tonight. Doug Graber as the Bulls win it by a score of 80 to three, their first football game. The fireworks before the game. It's just been a very exciting night for Tampa, for USF, for Jim Levin and his staff. Great game next week. Really looking forward to seeing how they do against the Citadel. That'll be at the Citadel. 570 yards of offense tonight for the Bulls. This has been a presentation of ESPN Regional Television. So long, everybody.